Kari isn't with us anymore. I know. Oh, I didn't. I had a couple come in. No, we didn't. I didn't send a notice. I don't. I, don't know what to do. I hope so. I'm sure if you tell more than that. Yeah. Jamel, you didn't notify any of the butters about Piper Shores being tabled, did you? Oh, you did. Oh. He's on it. He's on it. We, uh, Jay and I, did it both. We didn't talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Two notices, yeah. is what you're saying. Very good. Sorry. Oh, no, it's my fault. Sorry, I was going to apologize for calling. Yeah. I, I got to check yeah. out email about it. No worries. There's so many emails. Yeah. Yeah. Better than yeah. missing it. At least you were yeah. there. Yeah, at least that was there. And I actually got to do a little, it wasn't a site one, but I did a little flag down. Oh, good. Yeah. At least my so yours. It was yours. I'm going to put that on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> it was very warm on Saturday morning. Yes. Great to be outside. Let's go do some work. Is it any for the possible open seat? Well, I had a gap earlier. Do you want me to go get it? Don't start. Like I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We're depending on you. Jay's name plays. Thank you. and welcome to the January 14th planning board meeting for the town of Scarborough. I'll call this meeting to order. First order of business is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doreen, could you please assist us with roll call? Roger Bealy. Here. Nicholas McGee. Here. Richard Duperry. Here. Rachel Henriksen. Here. Robin Saunders. Thank you very much. Um, just a housekeeping note here. Uh, number 10, Main Life Care Retirement Community, Inc. Uh, the Elder, I'm sorry, the Dorado Drive plan has been tabled at the request of the applicant. So if you are here, for that. We uh, appreciate you coming down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next order of business is the approval of minutes for November 19th. Um, and the December 10th minutes, uh, we're going to table for the time being. So we're going to draft of those. So do we have a motion for the approval of minutes for November 19th, 2018? So moved. And a motion and a second. 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 Motion and second. All in favor? Sure that is unanimous. Thank you. Um, more housekeeping. We have the uh, election of new officers this year. Um, right now, I guess we'll just open it up for nominations. Yes, Mr. Bailey. Yes, I'd like to um, um, uh, nominate a slate, and I'd like to nominate Nick McGee as chair, Rachel Hendrickson as, um, as the vice chair, 
and myself as continuing as secretary. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for any of the other positions? I'll second everything. <laughs> uh, so with that, we'll close nominations. I have a motion uh, to move the slate forward as presented. So moved. Second on that, anyone? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Close nominations. Congratulations to our new officers. All right, first order of business. Infinity, the uh, credit union requests a site plan amendment review for the uh, 219 US Route 1, Oak Hill Plaza, Assessor's Map R58, Lot 32M. Jamel, would you like to prime us on this? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project's located in the TVC zoning district, uh, the Oak Hill Plaza, as the agenda reads. Uh, so the applicant's proposing to build a 2,993 square foot bank building or a 5,000 square foot bank building was approved by the board as part of the 2017 uh, approval process. So as the board may recall, the applicant uh, presented a sketch plan of the proposed project to the board in September, uh, and the applicant actually tabled their December application. Uh, staff has provided a draft motion to the board uh, for the, your consideration tonight. Uh, please note that this draft and modification, this is a draft and modifications may be needed uh, as board deliberations have occur. As was noted during the sketch plan review, the proposed building is more is a more contemporary design that is generally not contemplated by the town's design standards. Uh, staff did provide a review of host a review a host of review comments associated with the proposed design uh, during sketch plan review. Uh, so the board should be prepared to provide guidance uh, to the applicant in regards to your comfort with the provo proposed design approach. A few housekeeping notes uh, during the previous approval process. Um, tra traffic management through the intersection of Route 1 and Plaza Drive uh, were identified as an issue that needed to be addressed. The previous approval stated that the applicant will need to conduct a traffic analysis at this intersection after full occupancy and install a traffic island if conditions are warranted. Staff has refined this language as a condition of approval for the board's consideration. And also, um, the previous approval included a bus shelter along Route 1. Uh, the board and the applicant should be aware that the previous condition of approval identified the installation of this shelter prior to the first certificate of occupancy. This is also within the motion. That's what I have for now. Thank you, Jamal. Uh, there will be an opportunity after our applicant's presentation for public comment, in case you were here for that. And if would you like to introduce yourself for the record? Is this already on? Oh, it is. All right, great. Uh, thank you. My name is Kylie Mason from Sebago Technics. So I just want to give a quick overview. We are in receipt of the comments. Um, I think they're all agreeable in terms of we've, we have talked with the fire department about the turning movement. I've sent that response to Jamel. It seems that everything's in order there. Uh, we're gonna rerun it. If it doesn't bump the curb, then we're good. If it does bump the curb, we'll um, remove the curb in that section. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the bus shelter, um, I think we're just waiting for an approved model that meets with the corridor and we'll install it per the cut sheet um, that we receive and I believe Angela's okay with, with that. Right? Um, the sign, I apologize, uh, we learned after the fact that the sign is cut off in the application, so we will submit a new uh, sign cut sheet um, for staff if the board is uh, amenable to that. And a dumpster detail um, for the previously approved project, we're not proposing one as part of the bank, but for the previously approved pro project, we will provide an updated dumpster detail. Um, and then um, just to remind everyone, this is the overall project, but um, what we're what we're working on is this area here. Originally it was a 5,000 square foot bank. Uh, what we're proposing now is just under 3,000 square feet. Um, the drive through is where it's always been with the exception of what we've done is add a larger bypass to accommodate two lanes of bank traffic as opposed to one lane of bank traffic and a bypass. Um, we have shortened the facade obviously because the, the site is smaller. Um, we have, because we have this additional room uh, we've added increased landscaping, um, so that certainly enhanced the facade uh, further. Um, and uh, we have talked to DEP, actually Christine called today, and it has advanced to the next level for review. Um, we don't anticipate any comments. So with that, I'd like to bring the architects up, unless there was any site-specific questions that you wanted me to answer right now. 
Just keep, just keep going. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Zermiak. I'm with Sims, Manny, McKee, and we're an architectural firm, uh, A&E firm for the Infinity Credit Union project proposed. <coughs> um, tonight, I'd just like to walk you through the bank uh, project, uh, a little bit about the materials. <coughs> I think Kylie mentioned on the <coughs> approach for the project. To give, again, a quick overview, um, front entrance, rear entrance, drive through lane, drive up ATM, and bypass. So as Kylie, Kylie mentioned, we're uh, just under 3,000 square feet. I think we were at 2,992 uh, for finished square footage. Uh, here's a, a large scale plan, just so you can kind of get a sense of how the branch lays out. Um, main entrance here off of the parking area. Um, a waiting area entrance, banking lobby, main conference, a couple uh, support offices, management, a workroom, and then kind of the rear uh, of the house, restrooms, mechanical, break room, and then a rear uh, egress, um, primarily emergency egress. Or it just indicates a couple of the views of the, of the building. <coughs> and we can talk a little bit about the architecture. Um, so we are primarily a one-story structure. We do have about 80% of the building <coughs> at the 20-foot line. So we're kind of giving that impression of a, a two-story structure, if you will. Um, we're primarily um, a modern approach. Uh, we're, we're brick on kind of half the building, and then we're siding on the other half. We have a brick tower with some signage. Um, we have large windows um, for visibility. Um, we are kind of clear glass, uh, solar band 60, commercial grade windows. Uh, same thing on the storefront. Um, primarily a roof that's mostly pitched with um, some kind of uh, structural geometry and also some tapered insulation. Um, but we're EPDM and it's a white membrane on the roof. These images uh, before you now are just the pure elevations of the building. So the south elevation is primarily what you see coming in on the entrance drive. You can see up on the screen as well. So we've got mostly a brick facade here with a little bit of siding at the rear. And then, of course, some siding at the top. Um, our north elevation, if we go around the building, we go back to our east elevation. So primarily uh, entrance drive through this way. And again, mostly siding on this side. We do have a stone base that also picks up across the uh, south elevation, across the east elevation, and also continues around the north as well as a little bit of the west. So we come around the building. This is the drive-through side. Got the drive-through canopy with a, a deal drawer at the window against the building and then a drive-up ATM. We circle back around, coming through the drive-throughs. Primarily, this is your front entrance off the parking. So we have some entrance vestibule on the side, the main conference room, <coughs> and then a manager's office in this area. Uh, 
Um, here are just some uh, black and whites of the elevation, which is some of the materials called out. As I mentioned earlier, um, you know, brick through this area, uh, kind of a fiber cement through the back, and a stone course around three quarters of the building. So where we have, where we don't have brick, we have the stone course, but for the most part, we have kind of a, a, a stronger element at the base all the way around. Should point out on the drive-through side, we do have a couple uh, downspouts and scuppers, so we're kind of pitching the roof more or less as a mono pitch to the back of the building, if you will, and collecting, uh, you know, the rainwater and then getting it into the site civil, you know, structures that, that Kylie's group has set up. Here again, just more elevational uh, views here, the west and the east elevation, so the shorter. So again, the front entrance is here. Primarily brick with the brick tower and then the siding drive through canopies. I think that's all we had. We also just have a little <coughs> clip of the, uh, of the, um, Monument sign that will be located on the on the site, and that's uh, primarily located just off the south elevation at the entrance drive. I think that's all I had. Again, lower left here, some of the elements of the building: the brick, the stone siding, the siding, the windows aluminum fascia and soffit materials. So we kind of have a um, fair amount of, you know, modernist approach to the overhangs. And a lot of that, again, is, you know, an aluminum metal fascia. And the palette we propose is pretty neutral. We do have some of the finishes available around the corner if we need to take a closer look. But fairly neutral palette, um, you know, kind of red brick tones, as you can see, kind of a multi-toned uh, stone base that's going to run, again, three quarters of the, of the, of the uh, elevation of the facade. And then the uh, fiber cement, we're kind of, you know, proposing a uh, pearl gray with a white accent strip. We also have some uh, soldier coursing of similar brick, maybe just slight variation across the uh, brick facade. So we're kind of tying the whole building together um, with, with that element as well. I think that's everything I have, unless you have questions. Thank you. You all set, Kat? Okay. At uh, this time, we'd like to welcome any members of the public that wish to speak on this topic. Please. Go up, state your name, try to keep your comments to three to five minutes. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment and kick it off to the board. Uh, Rachel, do you want to start on this one? Yes, thank you. Um, I usually look at the, the architecture in the term um, New England or Maine vernacular, uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't take a look at um, alternative architecture. Uh, I think what is being presented while it is in the newer, certainly the newer design, uh, is both covered by adequate landscaping. Uh, I think the, the shapes of the building, the interest of the building, makes it actually seem smaller than it is and not obtrusive in the site. Is that the color down there? Is that somebody else's? No, if I appreciate a chance to just to... Yeah, to, to look at it. There's the actual side of colors. Sometimes the print doesn't come out so good. This is the stone base. Mm -hmm. We go with the brick. This is kind of uh, evidence of the 
like a palette of the brick, kind of that warmer traditional brick color. We're proposing actually to go with a, proposing actually to go with a larger brick module, potentially on the facade. So it's a 16 inch brick. So it's basically a double brick, which we have here, which is super heavy. Otherwise, I would bring it up and show it to you. But if you want to take a peek at it. I believe you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to have the box of bricks. Right, thank, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the modern design, in, where, it, where it sits uh, on the plaza. I'm comfortable <laughs> with um, the landscaping, and I think it will fit in to the site very well. So I'm, I'm just fine. Thank you. Thank you. Rick? Uh, sure. Hi. Normally I can see you guys much better. I'm going to move these. Mm -hmm. I don't have much anyway. Um, I noticed the um, traffic study changed just a little bit from a smaller building, um, which makes sense. And I'm trying to make heads and tails of the stormwater. You may know, did the stormwater cha um, system change at all? It changed a little bit. So the... I can use this one. So the the change that we made was it's still um, the first one with it being all sloped roof. It received its treatment mm -hmm. in a drip edge. Yeah. What we're doing now is um, the area of the roof that is not coming off the edge of the roof and going into the drip edge is actually going into a filtera unit, okay. and the rest of it is still going to the underdrain soil filter that was already there. Okay, that's kind of where I was trying to figure out yeah, that and how it changed. Um, I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's it's. There's a filter unit over here, drip edge over here, and under drain soil filter to the, to the rear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just changing the size. I'm, I'm fine with it. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm actually uh, fine with everything as well. I, I do have a question, though, regarding the architecture. Um, I, I like the building. I'm just not crazy about where it's located. Um, and what I mean by that is I think that design would be fine, like out at um, the gallery, Federal Gallery, or, or a number of other places. But it's not, it doesn't quite fit in that area. But I, I, I'm just expressing an opinion. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I think architecturally it's very interesting. Um, I guess I'm disappointed that something uh, you, I don't know whether you, you know, had any discussions about uh, potential changes uh, after the last meeting because we did express some, some concern about that. And um, is this the second, the second uh, branch of, of this? I believe it's the third. Fourth? Second of the style, but their third, your third branch overall? Yeah, we're going to have four branches of bank while we're Oh, so okay. So is this is this pretty much the brand that you know the style? Okay. Okay. I thought this might be just your second one around here because uh, I know you I know you have one over by the old exit eight. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, I, I I think the architecture is fine. I just wish it was a little bit, you know, more compatible with the other surrounding buildings around here. It'll certainly stand out. It kind of reminds me a little bit. There used to be a, ba a branch of a bank. Steve may remember this years ago, right there where around Walgreens is right now. And so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I guess I'm all set. Thank you, Roger. Um, just uh, one note that I had that I thought it, it was worthwhile to at least mention. Um, you know, there seems to be a lot of. Uh, a lot kind of weighs on your traffic dynamic after post construction, right? Occupancy, you need to do a study, right? Um, so, you know, in, in a brief discussion um, with staff, I, I was kind of concerned how do you pick the day, the time, and the hour? And you could have a <coughs> couple people who just don't want to kind of follow the rules and kind of ruin your study over the course of one hour. Uh, or conversely, you right. might pick the luckiest hour in the world and you see no one turning left. Um, 
so I think uh, staff, just to, so you're aware, has kind of a creative solution around how to kind of measure that and not kind of stick you with a one hour window and we're all crossing our fingers. So. Yeah, and actually the, ocu that, the occupancy point is uh, really important because it has to do with the entire development, both mm -hmm. buildings that are part of the approval, not just the bank building. But I think there was a mechanism built in that regardless of the study, I think if there was a, an accident, I think there's, there's something built in there that, is. yeah, that negates, you know, there's an accident that takes care of it and the design solution that's in place gets installed. Correct. So, okay. um, but just so you're aware of that, that it was a concern of mine that you could find yourself, you know, very lucky or very unlucky in, in, as a right. baby. So, yeah. uh, I like to see a law of averages there and I think there's a cost effective solution to, to obtain that. Sure. So with that said, um, I do have a draft motion in front of me. I'll, I'll read it. <clears throat> I move to approve the site plan amendment project titled Oak Hill Plaza, proposed by Infinity Credit Union and JDR Trust II, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, dated 12 21 18, with the following findings and conditions. The applicant is proposing to build a 2,993 square foot bank building with associated parking, landscaping, and utilities in the location where a 5,000 square foot bank building was approved by the board as part of the approval for the 25 Plaza Drive in June 2017. The property is located within the town and village centers, TBC zoning district, and is identified on the town Scarborough tax maps as map R38, lot 32M. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal, vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, Landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Conditions are to follow. One, to ensure safety of vehicular traffic prior to the release of the first building permit, a wayfinding signal signage plan shall be reviewed and approved by the planning staff, which directs all Route 1 northbound vehicular traffic toward the Hannaford Drive traffic signal. Signs should be located at all internal connectors to Plaza Drive and including no left-hand turn signage at the intersection of Route 1 and Plaza Drive. Two, prior to the first certificate of occupancy, the final location and design of the bus shelter pad is to be refined as necessary with planning department staff. Three, after full occupancy, during peak travel times, the applicant is to perform a traffic analysis of the Plaza Drive and Route 1 intersection. If the analysis demonstrates either A, that any accidents occur due to illegal left-hand turn movements, or B, if two or more left-hand turn movements occur during any one-hour time period, the applicant will install the proposed traffic island. Should the island be required to be installed, the final design will require planning staff review and approval. Four, prior to the issuance of the first building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, do not enter paint on the pavement adjacent to the one-way do not enter signs where the bank's exit intersects the parking lot on the site plan, sheet five of 16, and B, a dumpster enclosure detail. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. <coughs> Five. Prior to the issuance of the first building permit, the applicant shall A, execute the record of maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance, B, pay the traffic impact fees, C, coordinate with the fire department about auto turn simulation as identified in the staff review comments mem memorandum dated 1-14-19, D, address traffic peer review comments and traffic solutions memorandum dated 1-7-19, E, submit approval of the amended main DEP permit. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Six, prior to the issuance of a signed permit, the applicant shall submit his final signage plan. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Seven, prior to the issuance of a building permit for mixed-use building, the applicant shall pay a recreation contribution fee in the amount of 500 per residential unit. And eight, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may make one <coughs> friendly amendment um, on item three. Can we just clarify full occupancy of both buildings? Just so it's not confused, you know, several years from now. And so you want three to read after full occupancy of both buildings? Yes, please. For all buildings. All, all buildings. buildings. All buildings. Uh, do I have a motion to amend our motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of amending the motion as mentioned. Uh, all in favor of the amended motion. That's for all good. Thank you.
That's it. You're good Wonderful. To go. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Next order of business. Roger Hale requests a preliminary subdivision review for 263 Broad Turn Road, Assessor's Map R8, Law 13. Come out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project is located in the town's RF zoning district. Uh, the applicant's proposing a nine lot residential conservation subdivision. As the board may recall, the applicant was last in front of this board uh, in October uh, for a preliminary review. Uh, since that meeting, the applicant has made several changes to the plans, uh, including uh, proposing Peaceful Lane to become a public street. The applicant has made significant changes to the grading plan uh, since it was, this was last in front of the board, uh, so the applicant should be sure to discuss this tonight. And the town's traffic consultant provided several review comments. Uh, staff is comfortable with these being addressed with the final plan submission. And the applicant should also be sure to provide the board with an update on the historic assessment uh, tonight as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jamal. Would oh, uh, you like to give your name? And Hi. Good evening. Uh, Jason Haskell with DM Rome Engineers. Uh, we're helping out Roger Hale and his uh, proposed subdivision at 263 Broad Turn Road. Peaceful Acres is a nine lot conservation subdivision on a 23 and a half acre parcel in the rural farming uh, zoning district and it's currently being utilized as a sand pit. Um, access and frontage is going to be provided by Peaceful Lane, a six, 640 foot long roadway. Uh, previously, as Jamil said, we did propose this as a private way, but after discussion with the applicant and some of the other additions that we were going to need to put into it, like the sidewalk, he was uh, inclined to request or build this to uh, town standards for future acceptance of the roadway. Now, the road section will consist of a 20-foot paved travelway, uh, two-foot paved shoulders, five-foot sidewalk, and a three-foot grass shoulder on the opposite side of the sidewalk. Uh, other road improvements, uh, mostly based off of uh, comments by from the uh, previous middle, was uh, the addition of a street light at the entrance. Um, after coordination uh, with Captain uh, Butler with the fire department, he requested put in a 10,000 gallon uh, fire cistern, uh, which is included on the plans, and he has since approved the design and layout. Originally, we were showing uh, we were pr proposing one tree per lot to be installed. Um, the recent comments from the staff is uh, uh, is requesting that uh, we plant two trees per lot. And after a conversation with uh, the applicant, he did agree to include that in the plan. Um, the stormwater peak control uh, is going to be installed. Uh, is provided with an infiltration basin in the rear of the property. Uh, related to the lot development, um, town staff and the board has both expressed concerns with the stabili stability of the existing uh, sand pit walls. Um, to provide a more stable uh, reclamation of the pit, of the pit walls, and to also include it to provide a much more attractive and marketable uh, building sites, uh, the slopes have been proposed to a flat, to a four to one slope or flatter in areas. Um, we have submitted the DEP stormwater permit. Um, it was accepted for processing back on November 26, and we're still waiting to hear back from uh, the engineering uh, review comments. Uh, the intent of the project's design is to maintain 75-foot setback to the edge of the wetland special significance associated with the stream uh, to the rear of the property as determined by the DEP and the 25-foot buffer along all other wetlands as determined by the town staff, uh, the town of Scarborough. Uh, all wetlands and buffers uh, have been entirely included in the open space as a result of the revisions to Lot 1, the first lot to the left. As you come in, uh, Bill, ba Bill Bray with Traffic Solutions has prepared the roadway impact uh, fee determination and has been reviewed and comments been submitted um, and will be addressed at the final plan. We have measured the site distance and determined that in both directions is over 800 feet of site distance, which is far exceeding the required 325 feet uh, required for the 
posted speed limit of 45 miles per hour. Um, we have been coordinating with the Maine Historic Preservation Commission. Um, based on their, the, the initial conversation we had with them, based on their predictive model of prehistoric archaeological sites in southern Maine, uh, they did determine that the parcel had a probability of the presence of pre prehistoric archaeological uh, uh, sites. Um, and they requested that a prehistoric study be uh, conducted on the property. Um, an archaeologist from Tetra Tech was contracted and to prepare an archaeological survey for the property. After her investigation, she determined that there is a low probability that there was any land that needed further testing or investigation. Uh, the main historic staff, uh, archaeologists, uh, found the assessment to be adequate and determined that there would, there would be no required further study and that the, there would be no historic or archaeological properties affected by uh, the proposed subdivision. Um, we have received a few comments from staff, um, and which will be cleaned up, um, including the submission of the homeowner's documents uh, with the final plan submission. Um, we're still, obviously everything's kind of dependent on when we get the, main, the, the DEP approvals, but um, at this point um, we're hoping for preliminary approval on the revised design. And I'm here to answer any questions if you still have any. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we will welcome members of the public to make comment on this item. If there's anyone here, please step up to the podium. Seeing none, I'll close public comments. Kick it off to the board. Rick, you want to jump in on this? Sure. Yeah, um, the, uh, the photographs that were included in the package, um, I don't know if you have this, the same package in front of you, but... Um, is there any, how much grading is left to be done um, out there, or is it, uh, it's difficult to tell from some of these, some of these photos, it looks like a lot of the grading's been done, and others, it looks like there's still some pretty substantial grading that needs to be. There, there are several areas that are going to need some uh, rework, mostly just to flatten out some of the grades and to... You know, some of those slopes are extremely steep right now, so yeah. they've got to be flattened out. And there's, there's, to get to the site grading that we're showing on the site grading plan, um, it's been estimated that it may be somewhere around uh, 10 to 10 months to a year to okay. get it to that state and then move forward to the, uh, the road construction. Okay. I think you had in here, or you mentioned that the, you were trying to get everything within a four to one, uh, or flatter, yeah, or flatter, yeah. Okay. So anything that was disturbed from the sand pit as it is today is going to be flattened to at least to a four to one slope or okay. flatter, so that it's definitely a more stable, and you can actually get some grass to catch, and then. Um, any, any areas outside of within the open space except for the infiltration basin will be left to revert back to an undeveloped case, whether it's meadow or eventually we're hoping for like the, the, a forested okay. area. Um, and this may be too far down the road and maybe you need to talk to your architect or something, but how are you going to determine when you put in the foundations, how are you going to determine that the footing is actually on natural ground? I mean, have you? Because it's all pretty torn up out there, right? So yes, um, each you're doing you're doing foundations, right? You're not doing slabs, so oh yeah. Well, I'll, to be honest with you, I'm, the, the intent is for uh, the applicant to sell each individual lot and not construct any of the houses. Okay. So he's 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 not a builder. He's just a, a landowner okay. that has you know a yeah. piece of land that's served its purpose for... <laughs> yeah, and no, that's fine, and yep. that's, that, from, from what I'm getting at, that might be better anyway, because then it would be up to the individual lot owner to make sure that their contractor understands how to set the foundation on that type of... Because this is a right. little bit out of the ordinary, you know what I mean? Definitely. Um, 
Okay, yeah, that was kind of one of my main concerns, is just to make sure that 10 years from now we're not looking at houses that are all kind of crooked. Right. Um, other than that, I, you know, I appreciate you guys doing that um, prehistoric archaeological study. And yeah, the, um, yeah, I was just looking at your um, traffic study. Yeah, the rest of it looks good to me. All right. Thank you, Rick. Roger. Sure. Um, I actually think uh, it looks pretty good. Um, the photographs that are in your packet are what we saw when we were on the sidewalk, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Um, now, I'm kind of um, looking forward to seeing how this progresses because this is quite a challenging site. And uh, so, do you, do you happen to know whether the uh, landowner has any prospects in mind? That are, that are looking at any of these lots. I'm trying to figure out what the time frame's going to be. <laughs> it, it, kind of in a, we had a conversation with Jamel, Angela, and Jay on the project, and it's looking like just just talking with the um, with the potential contractor that's going to do a lot of the earthwork. It's thinking he's thinking that's going to be somewhere around the 10 month to a year out after we get approval to do the work, and then they'd start the lot development and the road construction and everything that goes along with that. So it would be all of a year before the, the lots get. So I don't know if he had, to be completely honest with you, I do not know if he has any potential buyers of the properties. Sure, okay. No, I, I, uh, it wouldn't be any time soon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this um, moves along because um, it would be very interesting. So I have no further questions. Yeah, uh, actually, I want to go back to the archaeological study, and I'm looking at uh, the archaeologist's report. Uh, on the second page, she said, uh, where she said both areas present low to moderate sensitivity. Um, but she also said that uh, Heritech uh, had um, uh, noted that there should be some, perhaps some additional consultation to determine if limited testing within the two identified level areas should be undertaken. As these locations fall within the 200 meter range of Carter Brook, identified as sensitive for prehistoric sites. Have you been doing that? Yep, we, we had the conversation with um, uh, the main historic uh, archeologist and based on what he saw out of the pictures and from the documentation and just his overall experience, um, he didn't think that there was any reason to continue moving forward. And a copy of that letter will be submitted in the next submission. Right. Thank you. Stating that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the other thing, one of the uh, notes from uh, the staff indicated that there appears to be opportunities to connect the proposed open space to the abutting open space created as part of the Mitchell Hill Heights subdivision. Have yeah, you taken a look at that? that? That's, I've had that conversation with Jim L um, about they are abutting each other, that both open spaces are abutting each other. Um, I'm not sure of any potential connectivity of the two. Uh, both open spaces will be touching each other. It's just it's going to be an undertaking if you were to try to make any type of a uh, trail connection, if that's what Jamel is implying, or if Angela, I'm not sure who made the actual comment, but. I'm not uh, sure what we're implying, words. I'm not sure that anything is implied other than have you explored that opportunity? And, and the to, answer is yes, and is it going to, is there gonna be continued um, exploration, or do you think the subject's essentially closed with the other property owner? Um, we haven't approached the, a budding property owner about that, um, mostly because I thought it was more that we wanted the two open spaces to be touching each other, kind of abutting each other. With no, with no uh, trails contemplated? No, in the, we, in the we didn't space. have any proposed trails. It was more of a conservation open space than a, a 
passive recreation. And you said it, it, eventually you're going to look at creating a forested area or hoping that there will be a forested area, uh, you know, 20 years from now right. in, in that open space. Are you going to be doing anything to move that space towards a forested area? You know, is there going to be any stewardship of that land? Uh, there would not be any proposed planting, uh, tree plantings or anything like that at this time. It would, be, it would be more up to the, uh, the homeowners association if they did at some point want to make it more of a forested buffer rather than the meadow. So you're going to start off with a seeded meadow? Yes. That's what it will yeah, it'll be uh, kind of a conservation mix that will go up and just grow wild and not be cut. Okay, wildflowers in the mix? Um, I believe I'd have to look at what the uh, the mix shows for a conservation mix, if there is any. I, I would uh, suggest you do. We're having yep. um, nationally and here in Scarborough as well, I think we're having problems with bee and butterfly populations and to the extent that that area can become a way station for our bees and, and the, the butterflies, you have that opportunity to start off there before we get okay. to the forest. So I would, I would urge you to explore that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I haven't really only had two items. First, I want to start by saying thank you for addressing the very steep slopes you did have there. It looks like you've you know, taken it to heart that you know, something has to be done with that. So, so walk, Walking up one of them kind of <laughs> made me feel that way too. <laughs> so I appreciate you taking the, the time and the extra money to, to, to invest in getting those slope grades down. So, um, One of the questions, actually, since we just touched on the architectural report, this is out of curiosity. Um, maybe you don't even know the answer, but how was... How is it that soils are used? Because it sounds like they did a couple test soil. They tested the soil. How is that used to determine whether or not it's an archaeological site of interest? Well, they, they looked at the soils, and then they did some uh, very uh, small test areas to see if they could find anything. But um, Is it to see if the soil's been disturbed? or is Yes. It, oh, okay. So it wasn't like a type of soil they were looking for. Right. Okay. Well, I guess Makes yeah, more kinda, sense kinda, kinda, <laughs> they want to make sure that there's some type of uh, like, again, a natural was, duff layer there. It's just a, curiosity. Yeah. When I read it in the report, I was kind of like, how does that work? But okay. Um, and then I think the only um, outstanding note I have here is um, there was a, some question as to whether or not you believe the fill that was going to be used into the area was going to be suitable for the septic systems. Um, is is it are those suitable you know soils that you'll be using for fill? Um, there was several. There was there were several test pits that were dug at the bottom of the pit, the mm -hmm. existing pit, and he was able to. Th those were all passing soils as well. Okay. There was no. He couldn't find any groundwater issues, okay. you know, or I mean, he had. He definitely found this, the required separation from the groundwater, and that each one of them was a passing okay. uh, soil type to uh, accommodate a septic field. Okay, so that the existing conditions can accommodate. Okay. He did. He did look at some on top of the hill, which and they're outside of the scope of the lots, right? Very much so. Right. But yeah. So okay. He wanted to make sure that every area of that lot was uh, had potential for it. Uh, with that said, um, it is a request for a preliminary um, approval this evening, and as such, I will make the motion that we provide preliminary uh, preliminary approval. Um, of the plan as presented to us at this time. So move, uh, second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Congratulations. Great. See you again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Next up, we have Tom Bailey requests a sketch plan review for 27 Ross Road, Assessor's Map R86, Lot 1. Jim out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to tee this up real quick. All right, so this project is located in the R2 uh, zoning district. Applicants proposing an 11 lot residential subdivision uh, should be served by a 900 foot long paved access road. Uh, just a reminder to the board the sketch plan review is an opportunity for the applicant and the board to have a high level uh, discussion about the proposal. Uh, so the applicant has noted that the subdivision will, be requ will not require a conservation subdivision design. Uh, staff would like to point out that 
acres of wetlands has been identified in the property and the town's conservation subdivision standards are triggered if one acre or more wetlands are found on the property. Given how close this is to the threshold, the board may want to require a wetland uh, peer review on the property. The applicant should also provide the board with an update on the consent agreement with the Environmental Protection Agency and any impacts this may have in the proposal. That's all I have. Thank you. Let's just state your name for the record. Good evening. My name is Travis Letelier. I'm uh, from Northeast Civil Solutions here to uh, represent uh, Mr. Bailey on the, the subdivision. Um, we're proposing a 11 lot con conventional subdivision in the R2 zone um, located off of Ross Road. Um, this subdivision will be cut from a much larger lot. Um, basically, we're cutting off uh, the land that's located in the R2 zone from the rest of the lot uh, to create the subdivision. Uh, <clears throat> we are proposing, to, the, the plan in front of you shows a 22 foot wide paved road um, with a three foot gravel shoulder. Um, uh, on either side, of the, we're proposing on either side of the road to, to uh, include swales to drain the storm water to um, uh, a potential uh, a treatment pond that's located uh, on the property. Uh, each lot will be served by private septic systems and public water and underground electric will be provided each lot. Um, the applicant is looking to only develop the road in this project. We are showing potential house lot house you know build outs on each on each property, but uh, the applicant is will be selling the lot uh, once it's uh, approved and uh, the road is built. Um, and with the with the road construction, we're looking at less than 2,000 square feet of wetland impact. Um, in addition to uh, the note about the one acre of, of wetland on the property. Uh, that does include uh, an area around 6,000 square feet that uh, it was, was a dug area that the applicant actually um, dug on the property and it's a, basically a, it was identified as wetlands on our plan but uh, I think in my opinion it, it wouldn't qualify as, as, a, as, a, as a wetland per se because it was recently dug and um, so that may, that may give more wiggle room to the 20 acre limit to the uh, conventional to uh, conservation subdivision. Um, and to further explain the consent agreement, um, which would be, uh, which would apply to the remaining land of the property, um, that's, that has to deal with the, the large pond that was dug on the property. Um, I'm not sure what it was dug, but it was for a landing strip for, for airplanes. Um, the agreement is with the EPA to, um, the first step is they have to uh, make it into smaller, they have, to, they have to divvy up that larger pond into smaller ponds to start. And then they will have the uh, option to either completely fill in the ponds or permit them um, as, as, as it is which they haven't decided uh, which, which way they're going to go on that. But again, that's sort of on the remaining land, and it's, it's our opinion that that shouldn't have any impact on this development. Um, with that, I'd open up to any questions or comments. Thank you very much. Roger, would you like to have first crack at this one? Sure. Um, On, on the pond that you were just talking about, is is that the one that's way up at the top, by any chance? I'm, I'm sorry, what's that? The, the pond that you were just referring to? Um, it's not shown on the plan. Oh, it's, it, it's part of the remaining land, and it's it's off, it's off over a half mile from this actual proposal. And it was part of a landing strip? Or? Yeah, the, the, the Baileys, they, they put in, if you look at an aerial, it's pretty obvious, but it's a large, long pond. They installed um, without the proper approvals, and uh, it, uh, it's for landing strip for, uh, for airplanes. Okay, on, on that map there, Yep. which one, which of these 
are these alleged, alleged outcrops? Where, yes. where's, the, where's the pond that you were referring to that was man-made? So this, this section right here, this little wetland area. That oh, right there, okay. Yeah, on lot right. number seven. Um, that was a recently dug hole by the Baileys. Um, but it was, it was filled with water when the wetland delineation was completed. So okay. that's why it's sort of marked as wetland on the plan. Uh, s staff had um, made a suggestion in their comments about um, Lots one and two, I think. Reducing those down. One, two, and seven to create more open space. Any thoughts about that? Um, yeah, I think the other option was to either also or to add some sort of barrier between the wetlands and the lots. Um, that there's definitely a consideration there for 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 the lots with the wetlands on them. Um, uh, each. This lot in particular has is, is pretty close to the 20,000 square feet of upland, um, which which is which is in this front area. Um, it, it, certainly, we can we can look at changing the lot lines or doing something to uh, ensure there's no wetland impact with the development of the lots. Um, just on this map again, for my own benefit, on the left there, the two-story house is that the is that the um, Bailey's, is that the parents? Yes. Okay, because I've actually been down there. And that's where the elk farm is to further, further. The what, I'm sorry? The elk. It's not there anymore. Oh, it's not there anymore. Okay. I, uh, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Seeing there's no farm there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rachel. Yeah, I think the, the problem with a, a sketch plan is review is that it, it is kind of sketchy. So uh, there's there's only um, it, it generates a lot of questions because yep. there's not a lot of detail. Yep. Uh, and I think because it does, we do need that um, that wetland extra wetland review. Yep. Uh, I'm also have a concern uh, along with the the comments of the staff about lot one, lot two, and lot seven. Uh, and I'm wondering how deep the ledge goes. Has there been any attempt to ensure that there's uh, is this going, going to have um, town water? Town water, but private septic system. All right. Is there any any indication that that ledge is going to interfere with the private sector? We actually septic? have test pits, and there there are two passing on every lot. So far. Okay. Um, sidewalks. Um, I had. I had previously met with staff. I, I thought I thought there was a mention that they may not need sidewalks for this proposal, um, but uh, I may have been mistaken. <laughs> well, you may not need them, but you may okay. actually want them at some um, point. Um, but I know there's no sidewalks on the on Ross Road or the road that it also connects into. So, um, well, it depends on when Ross Road was built. This is a brand new road going in. Yep. So. Um, we might just want to take a look at that. It's only 900 feet long, but yep. still uh, for families that want to take a walk, since this is not set up with the open space for mm -hmm. families that might want to take a walk, uh, sidewalks are very helpful, especially if you're pushing a carriage. Um, well, I look forward to seeing the new the, the plan in, in more detail, but I am concerned about the, uh, the wetlands, so yep. I hope we, yep. we see that. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, yeah, I'm assuming this is like public, going to be a public <coughs> road, the way it's laid out and everything? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, for a sketch plan, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, that land that's above there, the one that says um, inhabitants of the town of Scarborough, is that land trust land? Do you know? I'm not sure. No. It's just town land. Um, okay. And then. Um, It looks like on lot two, you know, that driveway's kind of pushed over <coughs> to avoid the wetlands. Yes. Yeah, we just want, I mean, 
I understand it's a sketch plan, but when you lay out that, when you do lay out that lots, if you have to shift lines around to avoid that, obviously that would be uh, that would be good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Sketch plan. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you're, um, you know, it's very high level. Uh, yep. I think, you know, if you're to take away anything from from what we have comments, I think one, first and foremost, is that those wetlands. Um, you know, I, I would encourage you to consider maybe the conservation subdivision route. You can elect to do that, um, and that might help with some smaller lot sizes, which can help avoid get wetlands off of private property. Um, you know, that's... Once it gets into private property, you don't know what's going to happen with that. So. Yeah, I think uh, with the con for, uh, with the conservation subdivision with private septic, I'm, I'm not sure what the lot size. I think it's pretty close to twenty thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, so it would be. I'm not sure how much it would change if it would when it actually the conservation route. Well, at least explore it yep, um, yep. or talk about it with your, your client um, a little bit. The um, the other thing to note is uh, the peer review. We'd like to see a peer review of those wetlands because mm -hmm. um, you are very close to the one acre. Uh, Mark, I understand that yep. what you're saying about that 6,000 square feet. Yep. But, um, and then uh, just just to reiterate, you know, a little bit more information, documented information on that EPA finding for staff just to have available, make yep. sure that this land is not impacted okay. by what, what you have in agreement with them. It'd be helpful as well. Um, outside of that, I have a sketch plan. So. Yep, yep, exactly. You got a little homework, and we'll <laughs> see you back here again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next order of business is BBS Enterprises Inc. requests a site plan review for 62 Muzzy Road. Ass assessor's map R37 lot 38. Nine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this proposal is located in the TBC 3 zoning district. Um, the applicant was last before the board in December uh, and in September as well. Um, the applicant's proposing a 4,860 foot square foot restaurant. Uh, and to relocate the existing barn on the site to be used as storage for the restaurant and renovate the existing farmhouse into an office space. Uh, so the applicant has indicated that they're interested in providing funds equal to the proposed sidewalk along the Muzzy Road frontage towards the town's multimodal reserve account. Uh, staff has included this language as a condition of approval for the board's consideration. Uh, staff continues to recommend that the applicant's the uh, applicant provide additional buffering provisions uh, to the west of the rear parking area in, or, in order to shield structures and vehicles from the abutting properties. So the board should be sure to discuss this with the applicant. The applicant did provide several 3D renderings of the building with the last submission. Um, and staff continues to encourage the applicant to incorporate the location of the restaurant hoods uh, within these renderings to ensure they are screened from Muzzy Road. And I'll turn it over to Angela now to discuss some stormwater details. I just wanted to, um, I guess, give a little brief um, overview a little bit about um, the stormwater, because I think there was a little bit of difference of opinion uh, um, last time they were in front of the board. And I guess I just want to point back out, just kind of for clarification for the board, um, with, and I've said this before many times, with any development, when you're increasing impervious area, you will be increasing the volume of runoff that comes off that site. That's, that's just the nature of development. What used to absorb into the ground is now sheeting off and heading to the streams. So um, the, the task of any developer and, and Northeast Civil has, has looked at this is really slowing that release down so that the actual rate of runoff coming off the site is controlled. So while you can't control the sheer volume, and I know we've heard downstream abutters talk about flooding, they, they will see increased volumes uh, of runoff. What we are tasked with is trying to control that a little bit, and it bleeds out over time, and how you stretch that out over time. And so staff's comments are really focused on really the elements of construction and looking at, um, such as the, the 
aprons that they outlet, the pipes outlet, and kind of trying to get those level lip to kind of dissipate the flow and, and level out um, over, rather than one point of concentrated flow, you're kind of spreading that out a little bit. And I guess there was some questioning on whether or not that could fit in with where the grading ends and where the wetland impacts um, were shown, um, because just needed to figure out those details to make sure that it's actually constructible. Because this is gonna be, I think, a very tough site when we get into construction, because there's not a lot of wiggle room. I think when we find sites like this um, during construction, we end up as staff out there trying to figure out um, if things move six inches vertically, it makes an impact horizontally. And when you're, you're up against wetland impacts, and so it'll be very important, I think you'll see in staff comments about making sure we know what that limit of disturbance is and drawing that hard line because we're making sure we're working in that window because it does put us in a, a tight situation when we're actually trying to build it. It's one thing to see a line on a plan, but when you're in the field and things field conditions dictate that things move a little bit, you gotta have some wiggle room, and this is really working up against really tight, confined um, constraints on the site. So I, that's the only, where the, the staff is focusing on really making sure those details get ironed out. Um, so that's what you'll find in staff comments. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. You're awesome. Awesome. Let's introduce yourself. And Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Jim Fisher with the <coughs> Civil Solutions. Uh, we were here last month discussing this project, and um, this evening we're back to be able to uh, show you the improvements based on the comments and the, uh, the questions that you were asked. So I'm just going to take a few moments um, to go over this. I won't uh, uh, bother us with the uh, full orientation. We've been here several times, and, and this project had received approvals actually two years ago before they cut everything. Um, and, uh, so this is the second go-round for that. Um, essentially what I'd like to do is just start in the review staff comments, which are the only ones we don't have any peer review comments. They had, uh, everything was covered and, and they did have a peer review comment saying everything was covered, so it's not an issue. Um, so I'll just go over the, the staff comments fairly quickly. Um, there was a question about making sure that the, uh, the barn portion of this building, which is the latter portion, is actually going to be used as an assembly use to the restaurant, there will not be any portions of the restaurant that are in that barn specifically for uh, dry stack storage. Uh, we talked about that last time, and uh, the uh, applicant is fully aware of that. Uh, they want to be able to preserve that to the extent feasible because it adds a great New England type of character to the site, uh, but that is only for storage. There is no uh, portion of the restaurant seating that would be in that particular area. Also, uh, there's a question about signage under general zoning requirements, and. Uh, uh, the applicant has not yet come up with a specific style of sign that they would like to be able to have. Obviously, we're restricted in terms of the size of that sign. That's not an issue. Uh, we will be back at some point, uh, probably shortly, either before or after construction, to be able to uh, run the signage uh, before the board as well and get approvals for that independent street sign. Under site plan review elements, uh, there was a question about the, uh, uh, the driveway and the location, of, uh, the location of the driveway relative to a waiver. Uh, there is a, uh, a requirement for a separation of driveways where feasible. This site uh, had the driveway there. It has the driveway there. We discussed that last month. Didn't seem to be an issue with that um, with the board, but uh, we would need a, a formal acceptance of that waiver for the separation of the driveway, our single driveway, um, to one portion of the double driveway that's on the property immediately to the right of ours as you're standing on the road looking at it. Uh, there was also a question about uh, staking, one of the things that Angela just mentioned. We have no problem whatsoever about staking that out. It's actually part of the DEP requirement as well. Uh, so as far as staking silt fen additional silt fencing uh, that would be literally along the area of the, uh, the buffer from those wetlands, uh, we can certainly demark that prior to construction. That's absolutely no issue. Um, it is a challenge. Many sites are tight. Uh, there's no problem as far as that's concerned. Uh, that will that uh, staking and or silt fencing will be uh, delineated in the field specifically prior to construction so that anybody's out there with any substantial equipment, they would be able to see a, a practical barrier beyond which they are not allowed to go. As far as pedestrian ways, uh, space and alternative transportation, there was a question about a 10-foot uh, wide easement for the future sidewalk, and as Jamel mentioned, we have no problem with that. Uh, that is the, the applicant will actually supply the funds to the town so the town can use that as it sees fit in areas that might be uh, more 
might have more necessity, as it were, in, in a more immediate uh, time frame to have a sidewalk somewhere else in the town or in this area. Uh, we can build a sidewalk. We don't have to. We're happy to provide the money to the town to be able to do that. Under landscaping, uh, we do have a stockade fence along the right-hand side, uh, separating it from the uh, all the materials building that you see on the right there. Uh, also, you had some questions about uh, additional plantings and buffering provisions regarding the rear parking area. We have added uh, a fence, a stockade style fence right here. Uh, the question I should say from an orientation standpoint is from these, these houses over here. Uh, when a car comes in here and has parks in this area or has some headlight wash, uh, these uh, two uh, properties here, this is a commercial property, um, these two properties wanted to uh, just make sure that the headlight wash is minimums, minimized. And so we've added a fence detail right here. And on the um, landscaping plan, you'll also see that in addition to the regular landscaping, it was coming up in this direction, uh, which is augmenting the buffer that's there. We actually added more landscaping right in this particular area. This section right back up in here is for snow storage. Um, but <coughs> as you can see in cars coming in this area, we're only looking at this section of property not swinging down to this section because we've got the, the additional buffer right in here that is in those landscape plans. We did discuss that last month. We didn't have any problem with that. We spoke with the applicant. He said, fine. We planted a lot of trees out there already. He certainly doesn't have any problem planting a few more in that area. Um, so that's absolutely fine. From a linear distance standpoint, just to give you an idea, this distance here is about 230 feet. And this is all heavily wooded uh, in this section. And then we've added these other uh, trees right here. So there should not be any problems as far as uh, headlight wash is concerned uh, across that distance. Uh, as far as stormwater management, so, uh, Angela is absolutely correct. Whenever you add an impervious surface area to an otherwise uh, pervious area, you have runoff that's got to go somewhere that wasn't before. Uh, keeping in mind that sort of to, to coin a phrase, when, when the rainwater falls from the sky, where it hits the ground is sort of grandfathered. That's just where it goes. When, we are, when it's natural ground, when we're creating impervious surface areas such as sidewalks, driveways, rooftops, et cetera, that generates an additional bit of stormwater. In this particular case, instead of shunting it immediately to, for instance, a detention pond uh, or another area that would end up uh, dumping directly into the wetland, we have uh, sought to detain that with a subgrade detention system that is underneath the uh, parking lot. We discussed that last time as well. And as Angela mentioned, the, our job really is to uh, make sure that anything downstream is to uh, have the volume, the additional volumes that are now stored in this area beneath the parking lot, released at a uh, slower rate so that in a significant storm event, or in any storm event for that matter, when stormwater actually goes in here into the subgrade detection system, uh, it is actually stored to the point where it's going to be released much more slowly than it is even now. So the point being is that the extra stormwater that we would be generating on site is actually going to release a lesser amount of stormwater into this drainage swale than is going there now. Uh, the volume is greater, the time frames are substantially longer, um, so that that release isn't anywhere near what you would get right now with a significant storm event just pushing all that stormwater untreated directly into that stream. So that's actually a, a significant benefit. Uh, there is a, uh, a request about the details for the uh, uh, intake and the outfall uh, for the uh, stormwater areas. We absolutely have those. In fact, um, it's, there was a request to be able to show that on the actual site plan. Um, it's very, very small on the actual site plan. So what we did, and if, uh, we would submit to staff, is we've actually shown that in the one location for the outfall that is right in this area right over here. So what happens is uh, we have the, uh, the level spreader. As Angela mentioned, the, the intention is to not channelize water. When it comes into a detention system, into a catch basin system, it's obviously channeled in an underground culvert to the point where it outfalls. If we just leave it outfall, uh, outfall at the end of that culvert, it will form its own, it's got a little plunge um, and into a plunge pool, and then it would just literally create its own little cavern on the way down to the, uh, to the stream. We obviously don't want that in any situation. So what happens is we create these level spreaders so that the outfall actually goes into a riprap area. It's then spread out, um, uh, I'll say horizontally, of course, <coughs> um, to the point where when that fills up, it's, picture it as almost like a very small detention system. So when that fills up um, on a level spread basis, that water, instead of coming straight out as a channel, is going to be spread out over X number of feet in any given situation and then flow as a sheet. 
so that it goes across the vegetated surfaces and then before it gets into the actual uh, stream itself. Uh, so that works quite well in this case as well. And we do have these details and um, as a condition of approval for staff approval, when they take a look at that, that's absolutely fine with us. Um, it's there anyway, it works quite well. And uh, I think you'll find out that uh, it, it's uh, quite beneficial to the actual stormwater for that area. It actually improves the situation. Uh, and then finally, uh, they had a question about uh, the hoods for the, for the building. Uh, we talked about this last time. This is the uh, hoods in the kitchen. And uh, Custom Concepts Inc. has been hired as the architect. And essentially what you're looking at is um, a roadway that is coming down here through Muzzy. Uh, we've got the farmhouse so that we want to keep that character of the farmhouse in front. The restaurant section is right back here. And then this is the storage area. We wanted to keep that New England flair uh, to it. it. It just adds to the character of that area. There's a small church across the street. There are some residences that are around the general neighborhood. Uh, the small shop that's on the corner across the street that's uh, got a little sandwich shop. It's a nice kind of little New England village type of feel. And we wanted to keep it toward that end. And there's been some work that's gone into the house already before we stopped work on that. And we'd like to pick that up again. The point being is that the inside of the kitchen area for the actual vents, for the place for these vents, hasn't been created yet. Uh, that will be obviously in conjunction with the uh, codes officer and building inspectors and uh, anything that does go up onto the roof to the extent that it's behind this house anyway, primary house, <coughs> back in this area, um, it's, it would be challenging really to kind of, for anybody who's driving by to actually see through this house to the area of the kitchen, which right back in here, which is the lowest roof. But oh, here's the hood, you definitely need it. And uh, toward that end, uh, we will work with the, uh, the building inspectors when we have that and just make sure that that, it, that uh, look is absolutely minimized. That's essentially it as far as the staff comments are concerned. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, ask them. I'll address them as we can. And uh, to the extent that it pleases the board, we'd like to be able to have uh, approvals with this this evening with conditions, whatever the board may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that'd like to speak on this topic, Please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I will close public comment. <coughs> uh, Roger, do you want to go on this one? Sure. Um, <coughs> I'm, uh, excuse me. I'm really uh, pleased to see that this is really almost, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel here. <laughs> I think this has been before us since I've been on the board, which is like three years or more now. and. Um, so I think you've done a good job at, at addressing um, almost all our concerns. Um, I have no problem with the waiver for the driveway. Um, and I guess the, the biggest, and you've satisfied the, uh, the buffering, I, I'm satisfied that you satisfied the buffering for those, those residents. Um, I guess the biggest, uh, the biggest concern is, is the stormwater management. And I, are you, if I, if I may, I, are you on the same page with him on this? Uh, I think we're, we're at the details that need to be worked through with staff. Um, I mean, I think they're meeting, uh, typically our threshold is looking at getting back the rates back to pre-development conditions at or below, and I think that's where we're at. Um, it's really, like I said, um, just because we've had experience with these tight sites and um, staff is put in situations where we're trying to force things in that don't quite fit, I would just like to, I, staff would feel better making sure those details are kind of ironed out, but probably not worth the board's time to, okay. to kind of. I just have a follow-up question on, yeah. on that. <laughs> That's okay. yeah. um, um, so when you say um, ironing out some of these details, um, do you believe that um, you need specific language in and do you uh, do you believe that the applicant and you have the relationship where you're going to meet I mean as, as some of the extra provisions he's providing or saying he's going to provide to you are those going to do you suspect that those will satisfy some of your concerns or? I think um, in the condition of approval and I think Jamel has drafted um, something that would um, I think address the concerns that staff have And that would be going back to working with staff. And is obviously with any condition, if it's meant to work with staff through it, if we are at a point where we can't 
get to an agreement, it comes back to the board anyway. Okay. Sorry to no, it's okay. off there. I appreciate it, Angela. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think, um, I mean, that, that to me is the only portion of this that's still up in the air to some degree. I think it's kind of interesting because um, the abutters downstream obviously had some real concerns for what had been developed up, you know, above you folks. And I think my, my impression, and I'm certainly no engineer, but I think this might actually improve their situation, but I'm not sure, you know, hopefully it will. No, I'm talking about the I guess I time. don't know how it would improve. This. Any development is going to change the situation. By slowing it down? Well, is that what, is that what, that's what you said, right? Yeah. Well, when you're adding impervious area, you're speeding that up as it shoots off the site. So currently, it hits the ground and soaks into the ground. Mm -hmm. So it goes through the groundwater to get to the stream. So that's a slower process. What we're doing is collecting it and trying to recreate that. You know what I mean? So it's not necessarily one for one. It's not comparing apples to apples. You're, you're definitely changing the way the water is flowing off the site. And I guess with any development, I can't say that you're, unless you have a site that is completely compacted gravel or impervious area is the only way you can really say you're improving the site by redeveloping. You know what I'm saying? It's right now it's soaking into the ground. So to pave it and contain it, you're trying to recreate well, the flow rates really is essentially what you're trying to do. But the volume is always going to increase. So to say you're improving it, you're always increasing volume. So I don't see how you could really say that. Well, I, I, okay. I disagree. I think okay. you can say that very easily. <laughs> um, because we're storing it. It's like you've yep. got a, uh, a stormwater that falls on the on, on pervious ground right now. Welcome to New England. It does. It's not mm -hmm. the Iowa soil that's six feet deep. We go down just a short ways to uh, impervious surface areas and anyway, basically subgrade ledge. But there is an absorption, to be sure. When you add additional impervious surface area, obviously you're going to have more stormwater. Or you're going to have more stormwater anyway. However, Picture underneath this parking lot, basically a room, as it were. Um, it's not that big, obviously, but it's quite long, where it's just it's an empty se uh, series of chambers. So all the stormwater that then gets captured, it falls on the impervious surface in the parking lot, basically, or the rooftops. It gets channeled to that area through a series of catch basins, as you see in your plans. Most of those are then directed to that storage facility. So in a, for instance, in a 10-year storm event, or a 25-year, in any storm event, essentially, we've got a certain volume of water that falls. If most of that water then hits, some of it's absorbed and most of it goes into the stream, which is why we've got streams anyway, um, you know, why they're created. If, uh, if most of that stormwater then is directed to this room or the series of chambers to be held there and released at a much smaller volume or, or velocity than would be there naturally, then yes, there's more water, but it's released downstream to anybody who's concerned about the volume of water and the rate of it going downstream. This slows it appreciably to the point where if you've got a bucket going one direction, in one case, that same direction now would have a few cupfuls at any given time. It would be spread out longer. So instead of saying, okay, we're gonna put it all here and when the storm ends, the water ends. No, when the storm ends, we've still got a lot of water that's stored underground that is going to be released very slowly. So the actual amount of water, the volume of water in that stream at any given time downstream is going to be less than if we just let all that stormwater just go in one fell swoop, just go right into that stream. So yes, I think it's improving the situation. We do have a greater volume, but it's improving the situation in terms of the people downstream saying, I've got a whole lot of water coming through my backyard. And I guess I would say that Walmart or the other larger development upstream would say the same thing about their wet ponds. They're storing it and releasing it, it'll, 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 you know, spreading it out over a longer period. It's the same kind of argument. And I think you do see the effects. What, what I think is interesting We're not gonna is... We're going to solve it tonight. Right. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, I was going to solve it. Tonight. You're going to solve it. Excellent. No, but what, what I think is kind of interesting with this site, because of the development, uh, the Walmart development, and, and how that affected the, the abutters um, on the other side of uh, Muzzy Road, mm -hmm. it, this seems very similar to me to the chiropractic uh, development right there next to Atria, mm -hmm. because the people in the condos were concerned about once that was developed. 
And I think it seems to me we're going to have a couple of examples of whether this really works or not, you know, to the to the benefit of the, the budgets. So that's my decision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set. You have anything? Rachel or Rick, do you have anything? To yeah, I've got a couple of. Of course, I have a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I appreciate your including the information on the landscaping that uh, the um, that you had put in earlier, uh, and including that. I, I'm looking at G2, which is the uh, actually the life safety plans. Uh, and one thing I noticed on the second floor is there's an area in that in the house that's a sleeping area. Are you going to be using that for residential? Uh, no, that that's a no. The house is to be an office for the people who are running the restaurant, but it's set up as a house, so they're just going to keep those rooms like that, but it's an office only. All right, because all of the other rooms have been relabeled. This is something relabeled as sleeping. Um, there's, there's not, they can't do that. They, they cannot, uh, I mean, if somebody's going to sleep on a couch or something like that for a few hours, that's one thing, but it's not a bedroom. Right. <coughs> I wanted to make sure that that was, your response was on the record, because uh, I'm, as I said, I'm looking at a plan that, that calls for sleeping area. Uh, and also on that same, uh, same sheet, the, uh, I'm assuming it's just for the convenience of outlining the buildings, but you've got, it looks as though the building, the house is separated from the, the restaurant. And on the first plan, first page, it is connected. So I'm just testing. It's not separated, is it? Uh, you mean from a physical structure standpoint? No, it's it's okay. one over a large building. It's from the All right. front of the house. Because again, the this shows a shows a separation. Okay. I have no problem with the waiver on the location of the driveway, and I really hope we're getting to the end. Thank you for the work. Rick. Yeah, I don't have a lot either. Um, I appreciate the applicant putting in that fence for the neighbors. You know, it's nice. You didn't have to do that, but it's being a good neighbor, so appreciate that. Um, I'm fine with uh, the hoods where they're going to be. The driveway waiver's okay with me. I mean, that there's no one here that's complaining about it, um, and I really don't see it as an issue. Um, and I think we got the stormwater. I know we talked about stormwater a lot, but I think based on what I heard from Angela um, and the way that the draft motion is has a condition in there, I think we're covered on stormwater. Um, yeah, I think you did a good job. That looks nice. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, so I, you know, I too am okay with the waiver for the driveway. It makes sense. It's a very tight lot, and I don't know where else you could really put the driveway. So uh, down on options there. Um, I think everyone else has pretty much covered the vast majority of it. I do, you know, encourage you to work very closely with staff on that stormwater issue. It is important to that that uh, wetland area and stream, and uh, and the air, the area in general. So. That said, I do have a motion this evening <clears throat> to move to approve the project titled Asian Fusion Restaurant, proposed by BBS Enterprises, Inc., as depicted on the plan set prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions, dated 12-18-18, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. The findings, the applicant is, proposed to is proposing to construct a 4,860-square-foot restaurant renovate the existing farmhouse into a 2,623 square foot office space and relocate the existing barn to be used as an accessory use to the restaurant as storage. The property is located within the Town and Village Center's Fringe TVC3 zoning district and is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map R37, lot 38. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation, finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review <coughs> and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization, layout, access, internal vehicular movement, parking areas, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, light, lighting, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. 
waivers. Uh, one, permit the proposed driveway location as depicted on the plan set dated 12 18 18. Conditions prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be revised to include A, additional plantings, buffering provisions west of the rear parking lot in the area where no plantings were placed as part of the main DEP directed restoration plan. B, a 3D rendering of the building that includes the proposed locations for the restaurant hoods to ensure that they are adequately screened from Muzzy Road. And C, the elimination of the sleeping area within the proposed office space as depicted on the, the life safety plan dated 6 7 16. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall pay the traffic impact fees. B, pay the in lieu fee in the amount equal to the estimated construction of the sidewalk along Muzzy Road frontage. The funds are to be directed to the town's multimodal reserve account. C, address the stormwater management comments in the staff review memorandum dated 114 19. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, Prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant should submit a final signage plan that shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the start of the construction, the applicant shall delineate the total disturbed area limits on the site in the area adjacent to the rear parking lot. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Five, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion. Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman and Angela. As far as the signage is concerned, uh, do I understand from this memo that the signage would only need to go back to staff for approval? As long as the sign fits the parameters, we don't have to come back to the board to show them what the signs yes, look like. If planning has a problem with, with it, they'll, they'll kick it back to us. Okay. Awesome. Right. Thanks for your time. Next we have, uh, this is number 10 was tabled, uh, 11 is uh, Mazzellian Development LLC requests a preliminary subdivision review for 28 Burnham Road, Assessor's Map R68, Lot 34. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this proposal is located in the RF uh, zoning District and the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. Uh, the applicant's proposing a 20 lot conservation subdivision. Uh, this item was last before the board in August for a preliminary review. As the board may recall, the town's wetland consultant uh, cons conducted a wetland peer review on this property during the fall of 18. As a result of this review, uh, several wetland and stream areas uh, have been expanded and several lots have been modified on the plans. Uh, so the applicant should be sure to discuss these design modifications with the board. As the board knows, uh, one of the primary purposes of a conservation subdivision design is to avoid impacts to the town's natural resources. It appears that in order to access lots one through three, uh, wetlands will be impacted. Uh, staff uh, continues to, to suggest uh, the applicant to consider eliminating these lots or modifying them in order to reduce uh, wetland impacts. Staff also recommends that the applicant uh, demarcate the upland edges of several wetland areas on the property with hardscape features to ensure they are not disturbed during construction or by a future property owner. Uh, these specific areas have been identified in the staff review memo. And the Scarborough Land Trust uh, did provide the board and the applicant with a letter that provides an update in regards to accepting the open space that abuts their property. The letter notes that no agreement has been reached with the applicant uh, to accept this open space. And staff would also like to point out that the size of lot 7 will need to be at least 30,000 square feet uh, per the zoning ordinance. And I'll turn it over to Angela to discuss uh, stormwater details. So as we just talked about, um, typically the board looks at um, the pre-development conditions and the flow rates that leave the site for runoff. Um, as is pointed out in staff as well as the Woodard and Kern peer review, there is um, some increases those flow rates shown at some of the areas on the site. Um, one of the things that you'll see on this though is um, some stormwater buffers that are shown at the rear of many of the lots. So there is some merit and, and I'm sure the designer will be able to walk through that um, with the planning board. Um, but it's really looking at, they're trying to show um, some water quality benefit um, 
and what ends up happening is the timing of the release of the flow that we talked about impacts the, the rate. So that's where you see the increase. So it's really um, about water quality versus quantity. So as we've heard, some of the residents had concerns about some of the um, volume and, and rate of flow in the existing <coughs> stream. It's just something the planning board should really have a, a good conversation about and, and, and hear what the applicant has to say or the designer and some of the reasonings behind, um, I guess, the design and where the planning board really wants to go because it, it's really a fork here that we need to, to kind of um, navigate and see which way the stormwater design goes because at this point, that's really the big thing that we staff sees is kind of up in the air um, without a finalized stormwater approach. Anything else? All good. All right. Thanks. Can you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, Steve Blake with BH2M. Um, <clears throat> I'll just walk through the, I guess, the, the basics of the project real quickly and address some of the questions that came up. Um, so as Jamel mentioned, this is a 20-lot conservation subdivision. It's located at 28 Farnham Road. Uh, it's in the RF district. The, the, the parcel of land that it's on, it's, it's actually a 90-acre parcel. Uh, the applicant is acquiring about 54 acres of that, of that overall parcel for the, uh, for the development. <coughs> uh, each of the lots will be on private disposal systems uh, as well as private domestic wells. There are two, uh, two proposed roads. Um, they total about 2,800 feet in length between the two of them. They've been designed to a public road standard um, uh, with the hope that, the, that it would be, they would be dedicated to the town uh, at some point in the future. <coughs> the open space is primarily, it kind of surrounds the, the development, but it's primarily along the west and the north side. Um, and as Jamel's notes mentioned, we've, we have had some uh, preliminary discussions with the land trust there seem to be mutual interest between um, both the applicant and the land trust about potentially dedicating that land to the land trust. Um, when we met with them last, uh, we kind of left it that we would work through um, preliminary approvals before we kind of advance into the next phase with them. Um, so <clears throat> it's still something that, that's being discussed, but there's nothing, um, nothing that's been finalized yet with the land trust. Um, there, <clears throat> there was the, the wetlands were peer reviewed. Uh, there were some additional wetland pockets that, that were found. Generally, they were, um, you know, expansions of the wetland delineation that was the wetland areas that were that were previously delineated. The the layout of the infrastructure of the project um, didn't really have to change for that change be, because of that. There's a, there's a small increase in the wetland impacts from the last time we were here. Um, the, the proposed wetland impacts are about 13,000 square feet right now, um, which is still a, a tier one permit with, with the state. This is a uh, site location of development permit as well. We submitted that application to DEP. About four months ago, we've received comments uh, from staff, from their staff, um, and, re and responded to, to the majority of them. The Army Corps has also reviewed this for the wetland impacts. Um, those permits are still there proceeding. Um, and then I guess for, <coughs> for, for a stormwater discussion, um, Angela kind of outlined what we had done for a design. So the way that we looked at stormwater, uh, well, I guess I'll back up. We have, we have a few different BMPs that we're using for stormwater treatment. Uh, we have two wet ponds, uh, a vegetated soil filter, um, and several buffers kind of around the, the peripheral uh, developed areas. So the, the ponds and the filters were designed to uh, capture, treat, detain uh, the, the majority of the infrastructure. Uh, so the roads, sidewalks, um, driveways, kind of the front halves of the lots. Uh, and then the buffers were for uh, water quality treatment for primarily for the backs of the lots. And those areas are on the backs of the lots for lots 8 through 12, uh, 18 through 20. 
and alongside of uh, 17. So the, the increased peak flows that, that we're seeing there, <coughs> uh, I would classify them as minor. There, there is an increase. Um, but it's, it's, due to the, it's due to the buffers not having the ability to detain some of the larger storms. So when we do a storm water design, we're usually required to look at a two-year, 10-year, and 25-year, 24-hour storm. Um, and once you get up to some of the, the larger storm frequencies, the buffers really don't have an impact on the models. Um, so anything landing on them, it's, it's the same rate of um, pre or post, it's the same rate of discharge. We have looked at uh, an alternative approach to those buffer areas, which, which would work. Um, <clears throat> we can, and we've done this in the past as well on the backs of the lots, we can put in an interceptor in lieu of a buffer, like a, a swale, uh, a swale or a ditch, and capture those back areas uh, and send them to one of the BMPs, like one of the, one of the two ponds or the filter. Um, there is, the way that we have the ponds designed, there's surplus capacity to handle those areas. Uh, so we do have an alternative approach to the buffers. Um, you know, they, they do provide good water quality treatment, uh, but like I said, the, the detention, uh, we just don't get enough detention out of them. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have an opportunity this evening for public comment on this item. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this issue, please approach the podium, state your name. Okay, seeing that, we will close public comment. Well, I'm going to go first, give you guys a break. Um, <laughs> and it's going to center largely around the stormwater aspect. And I just want to be, um, you know, kind of really want to understand this to the point where I think all the parties can walk away here kind of having that clear sense of direction on how to approach this. So, Angela, could you, um, you know, you say we're kind of at a fork in the road, right? And uh, can you tell me which which side the left goes and which way the right goes. And uh, if, I mean, I imagine you need guidance from this board. Um, the applicant will need guidance from this board on, on where we would best go with this. So if you could uh, outline where each path goes, I think that would help us. I, I will try. I'll probably ask Steve to chime in as he needs to. Um, but I guess I see it as the, how the plan sits right now with the buffers. Um, does show an increase of flow. So if you look at the calculations, um, it does show it, an increase of flow rate from the site, which is something this board has used really as that benchmark. And so to, to talk with abutters who are gonna be impacted, um, which we have heard from, that is you know a concern to be able to, um, I guess, justify that increase um, to try to show that it's insignificant is a hard kind of sell when you're the downstream of butter. So that's where it really needs the planning board to kind of weigh in on how how they feel that is. All right. <laughs> so while we're on that, Hunter, okay. I'm going to interrupt you now. So what does it take to get to a neutral position? Is it more treatment? Is there are there other things that can be done? to get that to not an increase, but to at least a, a net neutral to some extent. Well, and I guess that's what Steve is suggesting, that the other fork is that you actually add, um, instead of that buffer, the strip that they're shown in the hatch, you'd actually add um, a swale, which would carry the water to where he's already proposing stormwater treatment. So it would then take it to those areas where he's saying, he can size those accordingly, treat it to meet the standard, the DEP standards, and then be able to discharge it and show that you're not getting that increase. The difference is you will be um, perhaps cutting more on the back of those lots. You will be <coughs> constructing a swale, which will have to be maintained, which means typically how we deal with that is easements so that if someone goes out back and fills their ditch, then the homeowners associations that can open that back up to make sure that that water continues to flow um, so that you're not impacting everybody around you. So it's, it's pretty typical. You know, we've done that before. Um, Tucker Brook was an example of one that exactly we did that in the rear of the lots. 
there's a swale that, that takes all the storm water out and around to get water quality treatment for. So there is an, an alternative and that's what Steve is suggesting is, is how he could um, change the plan. Yeah, and we, we have capacity in those ponds to do that. Um, it's just, just a matter of, of grading that in and, and, and removing the, the buffer area. So uh, I'll start there. The, what was the benefit of the buffer area versus the swale to begin with? Um, well, it's, 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 a, it's a good water quality measure. Um, and I know we, we've had discussions um, before about you know, some of the, the benefits of various BMPs. And, and, and a buffer is something that, that you do get really good water quality benefits from, um, even more so than, than say, a pond. Um, but like I said, you just on, on some of those larger storm events, you just you can't get the detention. Um, it's a, I mean, it's the, the buffer is it's a deed restricted area that, that can't be cleared. It's going to be left vegetated and, you know, in perpetuity, essentially, so that there's um, that vegetation kind of acts as, as as treatment for any runoff that comes off the back of the lots. Um, and. And, and that's really all those, those buffers are for. They're not for any of the infrastructure. They're not even really for the, the driveways for the houses. All of the, all of the infrastructure would go to the ponds or the filter. Um, what, you know, we're, not, we're not opposed to the, the swale idea. Um, it's something that we can do fairly easily to, to get everything to those ponds. Um, but the, um, you know, I guess our, our, our look at it was that it is an increase um, in our opinion, it was an insignificant increase. Um, and there's no doing both, right? There's no such thing as a buffer and a swale? Well, the buffer wouldn't really serve a purpose if there is a, if there is a swale. Right. right. Yeah. All right. It seems like I'm learning things. Uh, <laughs> so I think, correct me if I'm wrong, so we now understand the fork, right? Which is, one, we get a small increase, but potentially a better quality of water on site, or two, we go this way and we, we channel all that extra water, reduce the flow into these detached ponds. Correct, yeah. We have full understanding, right? Okay. So that's something that, you know, I think we should be providing some But I guess to guidance. clarify, I guess for SD to clarify, so you're saying though what that buffer, as you show it now, you're like, again, you'll hear one of our board members, Robin, is always saying that a uh, vegetated buffer is the best kind of treatment. Um, but I guess what you're suggesting, though, is just the back lawns of these lots are the only thing directed to those buffers? Yeah, basically the, the back half of the lot. So it might be, you know, at the ridge line of the house and then, and then whatever lawn you have on the so back I, side. So I guess I would suggest the pieces that we're probably most concerned with, the roadway, the driveways, the house are already going to those VMPs, so right. yep. I guess the increased water quality you're getting is off of just a lawn area. Is that true? Um, yeah, I mean, versus sending it to a pond. Yeah, that's correct, right. So it's a weighing, how, how much do you value that water quality where it's just a lawn as opposed to the increase in, in, in rate? coming off the site and whether it's an issue or not. So I have a question. So from a, an abutters perspective, it, from what I heard, and I'm not sure if I heard it correctly, but from an abutters perspective, the swale would better eliminate their concerns regarding runoff. Is that accurate? It would take the water that we're worried about running off to the abutters down to the ponds. I guess I, I don't know specifically what the abutters' concerns were, but with the, the swale option, it would uh, reduce the rate of flow to that to the stream or to the, the receiving water body. Okay, I would I would you know based on what we heard here the last <coughs> time that the room was full, I'm thinking they're concerned with the runoff and the volume of the water and their lots flooding. So if the swale will eliminate that or significantly reduce that risk, then I would be more concerned with the abutters and the quality of the water, if that makes sense. So I would be in favor of improving it with the swell. Okay. Thank you. Rachel, do you have uh, thoughts on uh, 
fork in the road here. Uh, well, I have a lot of confusion. Um, confused thoughts, let me say that. So yes, I have some thoughts. Um, so let me just conf confirm if I've got it right. I appreciate <laughs> that. So for lots, uh, let's say um, six through 12, um, with the buffers, the backyards, the water from the backyards would go into those buffers, and that in turn um, lessens the flow into Silver Brook and the wetlands. Is that the the buffers wouldn't reduce the rate of flow? They would ju they would pr provide some level of. of the water quality treatment. Okay. Yeah. And the water from the front of those lots goes into the storage pond. Correct. So now let's look at the lots that are the closest to where we had the abutters, and that's the Trapper John, um, the Trapper John uh, subdivision. Uh, and is the water from lots, let me see if I can... Read it. Uh, one through five. Where's that going? Uh, towards the road, so to either a pond or a filter. The topography on those lots slopes from south to north. Um, we, we wouldn't be changing that as part of the project. So, uh, so from Trapper John, everything, Trapper John is higher than us. So okay. everything from Trapper John is coming towards our project and through our project. So the biggest concern about overflow into abutters comes from the back lots, the uh, yeah, 6 through 12, basically. 6 through 12 and, and also 18 through 20, which abuts the, 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 the main parcel. Okay. Yep. I, I, I guess I like the idea of the swale um, as something that I think protects more of the brook area. Would that be your assessment? Um, <clears throat> from a, uh, a peak flow perspective, yes. Because the brook area flows into a lot of other properties. Uh, and gets a lot more of the other properties downstream. So from the perspective of the abutters, it would be more beneficial to control the flow into the, the Silver Creek. And I guess I would think that that would be the appropriate, the appropriate way to go. Saying that, then it still creates a, a difficulty that, that we've seen uh, and that is, yes, the homeowners the association can come and tell somebody, I'm sorry, I know you, you just filled in that space and put your, a play yard in there, but you're going to have to dig it up. Um, what we've seen, I think, is, is that the first homeowner knows very well where the line is uh, and remembers that there's a boulder here and a fence there and there's something that marks the, the limits of... Um, the limits of, of development or the limits of lawn. And the second owner passes that information on and the third owner forgets. And uh, a lot of third owners, and actually second owners and first owners, uh, sometimes forget to read everything in the, in the, uh, in the deed and all of the, the caveats. Uh, so it would be very important to ensure that there is very careful, very clear visible permanent demarcation where those buffers, where the swale is going to, is going to start. More than, um, uh, more than an easement over that, that area? They're not going to pay, a, you know, 10 years from now, people will forget there's an easement there. Yes, so I, I'm saying is that as you go along, uh, put a lot of thought into how those lots are sold. Those lots are developed, uh, and the the swale is maintained to ensure that the sure. uh, to ensure that it stays. Because 
a split rail fence doesn't last all that long, uh, and people plant flowers around boulders, but um, we need to take every steps that we can to ensure that once we've agreed on a property that is, uh, I'm going to use the term problematic because of the potential for the, uh, the, the stormwater issues, uh, that that somebody is looking after it in perpetuity. That it just doesn't, the, the protection of the stream just doesn't get forgotten in 10 or 12 years. I have one other question where it has nothing whatsoever to do with stormwater. Which you're probably thrilled with right about now. And I'm looking at um, the schematic for uh, what is it, the first road, Massey Road? Yeah, Theresa Massey Lane. Uh, you, you show a turnout for gang mailboxes, a mail turnout. Uh, this is going to be a public road, correct? It is. Why are all the mailboxes going to be clustered down there instead of um, located at the individual families? Um, that's, that's been a requirement from the post office. And where is the car, where is the uh, mail truck going to turn around? Um, he, and, I mean, he would, he would have to go up and turn around and probably use, uh, use, the, use the dead end, the hammerhead, to turn around. So the mail truck drives right past the houses <coughs> with no mailboxes. All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> if that's what the post office wants and it's going to deliver the mail, but this, uh, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of... It doesn't make a lot of sense since the truck has to go back past all of the houses in order to turn around and head back out. Um, but, all right, thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Um, Roger, do you want to weigh in on the stormwater fork issue before we leave the topic? Well, it, just briefly, um, listening to the comments, um, if, if you stay with the buffer, there's basically no maintenance involved with that, as I understand it. If you go with the swale, and I think you mentioned it has to be maintained. Um, I think to Rachel's point was that regardless of whether it's a buffer or a swale, it's about the homeowners realizing there's something there. I think there's no real difference. Um, I think they have to know that that exists. Okay, so if the swale is there and the homeowners don't do anything with it, but just normal growth mm -hmm. occurs, mm -hmm. Nobody has to go in and clean that growth like they do on the side of the roads. So oh, no, it would, yeah. It I would. mean, it would take time over time, yeah, but it'd be no different than, I guess that would get incorporated into your inspection and maintenance manual that he's going to have to provide the homeowners association for anything, for um, any roadside ditch, backyard ditch, the stormwater BMP, um, yeah, that, that would all be incorporated into that homeowner's association. But that, that wouldn't occur with just the, the buffering they were proposing. Um, that would probably be in that that manual as well. Obviously, it doesn't take mm. the um, the maintenance, no. But um, it would be incorporated in that to make sure that that stays, I guess, a forested buffer. I think that's what we're finding is, is hard for staff to kind of enforce, we're not in people's backyards, sure. to know that it's actually being <clears throat> maintained as a forested buffer. Between the two. Because replanting trees would also cost sure. money. <laughs> is there, um, in your estimation, is there a discernible difference between the, um, the buffering and the, um, what's the other one? Swale. Oh, swale, yeah. A difference for? The, the runoff. Well, yeah, as we we're saying, the a discernible the, difference. I mean, oh. are, we, are we talking about hardly any difference at all, or, are we, it, or if there's a substantial difference, then obviously we should go with one or the other. I think I'm just thinking in terms of the, of the future maintenance, mm -hmm. and like Rachel brought up, the um, you know somebody doing something to it, filling it in, or whatever mm -hmm. they may do, mm -hmm. versus the buffering. It seems to me the buffering is the least least you know has at least maintenance mm -hmm. requirements. Mm -hmm. So if there's very little discernible difference. I guess that's, 
It's hard for me to sit here and say what I see as insignificant, whereas a homeowner downstream that sure. sees water in their basement is going to say any increase, right? So it's hard for me to sit here and say that's not significant. Um, I think you're asking me, it's, it's really on the, yeah. I guess I, I don't want to put myself out there to say that on the record, to say that's not insignificant when down the road, if there are issues, um, I think it's better to say, show that the numbers show that they <coughs> to the creek development in my si situation for my seat, um, just because if there are issues down the road, you can kind of point to the calculations rather than saying, we had a gut feeling it wasn't going to be a huge increase. Okay, but to a homeowner downstream, that could be a huge can we Can we show that, those numbers, uh, with the two? That's provided. Okay. Yep. To show the increase, the increase, they he's provided the information and those numbers <coughs> and showing that increase. So, <coughs> basically, you're you're saying the square. You <coughs> are going to be the square. <laughs> um, in in light of the abutters that we've heard from, I think it's an easier path for the board to go. Um, just because you're going back to your you, your policy you've typically held to all most of the developers in town, I think we've been pretty consistent this board to say try to meet or get below pre-development. I mean, there has been some very rare cases we get into insignificant rate runoff, say for a two-year storm event or something like that, um, in certain situations where you have. It's really about context, too. Um, I think it's just a little more difficult because you've heard from the abutters and the concerns for um, the runoff mm -hmm. from this development to say that it's in the eye of the beholder what insignificant is. That's okay. a hard one to quantify. Well, we, it seems, <laughs> seems to me we do have to give them some direction. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the chair should do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I have nothing else to, on this particular topic, right? This is what That's we're yeah. I just kind of wanted to <laughs> okay get this get this hammered away before we start in on any other general okay. comments. Um, so you know, uh, I wish there was probably um, you know, I wish you could tell me that if we put the swale in behind twenty through eighteen, we've hit n neutral and we can leave a, a vegetative buffer on the back of those other lots. But it sounds to me like yeah, you kind of need one or the other. Yeah, we need to we need to capture it all. Um, yeah. So, so I, I think uh, for where I sit, I, I I would like to kind of hold the line. That this board is really um, established and say, you know, we, we want you to be at least at what pre pre development conditions were or better. So uh, for me, the swale is is I think where I'd like to see this go. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, we, we have an approach that, that we know will work, so we can we can work with that. Okay. Um, and then as far as getting into the other issues. Um, You know, it seems to me like that seems to be the biggest hurdle. Just noting some of the lots on this this plan here. I know Jamel's, uh, you know, pointed out lot seven is a little undersized. Um, we've yeah, we've we've adjusted that. So you, you are adjusting yeah, that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Actually, um, this this plan right here has that adjusted. Is there? Well, let me ask you that. Is there been? Um, I mean, I, I do see wetlands on private property, and it seems like some of it's probably unavoidable just based on. What you're given to work with here, I'd like to really minimize that if we can. Uh, an example of that would probably be like lot 14. Um, it, it appears like you, you might have enough to kind of get rid of some of that that back end of the property, still be at the 30,000 square foot area, and, and get the wetlands off. It, items like that. Uh, you know, I don't, don't want to draw the, the lines for you, but I, I would like you to consider items such as that as you look to kind of rework this a little. Yeah, and I mean, I think we've we've minimized them as, as much as we can, and you know, while still you know trying to leave a, a, a reasonable building window. Um, I know the the bulk of our wet our wetland impacts are associated kind of near the the main entrance of the road where we have two wetland crossings, um, and, and the way that we went about designing that was we you know we we targeted the the narrowest point of those wetlands um, so that we we could get the road through there. Um, you know, if we 
and we have some driveway impacts for lots one through three, uh, but the alternative to that would have been to, to relocate the road into some of those wider wetland areas and, and impact more, more wetland. Um, the way we have it structured now is we're, you know, we're avoiding the bulk of that wetland um, and just impacting it where we have driveway crossings. Um, so, you know, there's, there's about seven acres of wetland um, on the parcel. We're proposing to impact about a third of an acre. Um, so that's, you know, we've, we've really structured the subdivisions or the subdivision, the lot layout around avoiding where those, where those wetland pockets are. Um, and then this is just a general information uh, question on my behalf. Uh, the test pits that you have here uh, delineated on this plan, some of them seem really close to the wetlands. Is, is there any type of, do you have to be X amount of feet away from a wetland delineation to conduct a test pit? Or nope, they just have to be in the appropriate soils. Okay, so um, is that potentially the location of their wouldn't be private septic or is it public water? I mean, not private water, it's a well. Um, the well zone, so so the, the majority of these lots have the septics towards the back of the lot and the wells would be towards the front of the lot. Um, and this plan doesn't show it, but we do have, um, in the, in, when we submit for final, we'll, we'll show the, um, there's well zones that um, were delineated by the, the nitrate study that was done for, for each of the septic systems. Okay, so we'll look forward to seeing that. Um, outside of that, for right now, I think I've cleared the items that I need to discuss. Roger, do you have anything else you'd like to talk about? The only thing, I, I just wanted him to comment on um, the uh, fourth bullet on, on the staff's reports regarding the wetlands um, you know, uh, pertaining to lots 13 through 17. Was that about? Um, that's that's um, um, you know putting in some hardscape features such as a rail fence or boulders. That that's that uh, spit of wetlands that comes down. Yeah. In the middle. Yeah. Yeah. There's a finger of open space. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, in in the past we've done. Um, oh, is that open space or is that part of wetlands right there? Looks like there's a a, a little bit of wetlands in there. It's, no? both, it's, both. Both. Yeah. Yeah, it's both. It's both. Yeah. It's both. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, that's, that's, kind of, that's why we have the open space uh, laid out like we do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I know the, the applicant is willing, willing to work with, um, with the board on, on kind of how that gets demarcated. Um, I know in the past we've done, you know, we've done pins, uh, boulders, uh, split rail fence. Um, I think that's that's all I have at this time. <clears throat> Thank you. Rachel, do you have anything else? Rick? I'm actually good now. Okay. So I um, you know, I know you're requesting preliminary subdivision. I think you I think you still need to just from the discussion we've had go back, kind of tidy up some of the stuff and then would it be would it be possible to get a conditional preliminary approval? Um, I mean, we we know what we can do with the stormwater. We know we know what we have to do for for a redesign. I'm just wondering if it's something that the board would consider as a as a conditional approval that we um, that we address the, the outstanding staff comments, including the the stormwater comment. Um, I think I'm. I I don't know if the rest of my board members share my opinion, but I think I'd like to see it again with the with the full layout and, and the plan that we can kind of digest. And I, I know it's uh, not always convenient to have to go through the cycle again, but I think, at least from my personal opinion, I, I would like to see the, the, the information again presented. Yeah, yep. so I think that's it for tonight. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next, we have Portland Pump Company request a site plan amendment review for 11 Border Road, Assessor's Map R55, Lot 9. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project's located in the Industrial Zoning District uh, off of Border Road. Uh, the applicant's proposing to construct a 2,400 square foot warehouse building. 
and approximately a 800 square foot gravel driveway on the property. Uh, staff has suggested that the applicant modify the parking on the site. Uh, that could result in a larger contiguous lawn area. The applicants should discuss this with the board. Staff would also like to point out that the applicant has noted that building mounted lighting fixtures are proposed on the property, but did not provide a lighting plan for review. And staff was a little confused about the existing proposed utilities on the property, uh, so the applicant should be sure to discuss this part with the board. And that's all I have. Good evening again. My name is Travis Letelier. I'm with uh, Northeast Civil Solutions. Uh, here to uh, present the uh, amended site plan for uh, Portland Pump Company. Um, the site, uh, as Jamil said, is, lo is located at 11 Border Road in the industrial zone. Uh, we're looking to propose a 2,400 square foot um, metal building uh, on the site uh, to be used as a warehouse. Um, based on the usage of the property, there's a requirement for 28 parking spots. Um, currently, there are eight uh, parking spots currently de uh, delineated on the, in the paved section of the site. Um, we have located an additional 20 parking spots uh, within the existing gravel area on the, on the property. Um, <clears throat> and there was a, there was a comment about uh, how to delineate the, uh, the proposed gravel parking uh, since we can't put pavement markings down. Um, we're, we're looking to uh, propose using some sort of signage, uh, either uh, begin and end parking type of signage uh, on the building and then uh, just uh, at, the, at the ends of the proposed parking in the front there. Um, There's also a question about the there's a 20 foot access road around the, the rear parking. Um, when there's a there's a 25 foot requirement within the ordinance, um, we we propose 20 feet to for for a few reasons um, to reduce impervious uh, as much as possible on the site. Uh, we we will be required to add a, a little bit of gravel to get to the 20 foot mark. Um, also, there is a small landscape area with a tree in that area, which we hope to um, keep with keeping, uh, with keeping the width at 20 feet. Um, in addition, we were also proposing a grass area in the front of the site. Um, that will be to delineate um, the proposed parking, also delineate the gravel drive around the new building, um, in addition to delineating the property line. Um, we're hoping to more or less keep it as, as proposed. Um, as far as uh, existing utilities, uh, the site's currently served by public water and sewer um, and electric. Um, the new building will only need electric service. Um, where we're proposing the new building, there's actually a, a couple of storage units that have an underground electric service currently going to it. Um, we're proposing to reuse that service for this new building. Um, and there was a comment about the lighting. We're actually not proposing um, any wall-mounted lighting at this time. Uh, I think I think what I had meant to say in the previous submission was that if there is any lighting in the future, it would be a Full cutoff type uh, type lighting, but there, there's no there's no lighting proposed with this with this submission. Um, and with that, I would uh, like to open up any questions and uh, comments. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment this evening. If there's anyone here that is. I uh, would like to speak on this. Please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comments. Rick? Sure. So you in, you have no lighting plan for the outside of that building at all? No, no. We're, uh, What's it, the current it, lighting there? I'm not familiar with that site so much. I believe there are some wall packs on the existing building. Um, I don't... And I think there might be... There's an existing light pole um, on the, uh, 
actually just off the site right there. But uh, other than that, I. So what exactly is that? That's just going to be warehouse space. Warehouse space. Yeah. Storage warehouse. Right. So is the. Uh, is it? Are you thinking that it's just going to be used during the day? I mean, so you. Uh, I mean, there might there'll, there'll be lights inside the building, of course, but uh, I, I don't see. You don't see the need for any outside lights. No. I guess I might have to do a drive-by or something. I just can't envision a building with no lights. In it. You're adding 24 spaces? Um, so the, the ordinance requires basically the, this, is, this is office and warehouse currently. Um, the ordinance to come up to current standards requires 28 parking spaces. Um, there are eight. Oh, for, for both buildings? For both, for the whole site. I'm sorry. Whole site, the way yes, that I yes. read it, it that oh, it required 28 spaces. No, no, no. And I didn't realize that you were including the existing building. Exactly. So exactly. you're only adding the four. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That but makes, that makes a lot more sense. We're all 28 on the site plan. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. I thought you were adding 28 spaces with no lights. No, no, no. Uh, okay. That helps. Um, so is there, you said there's two existing storage buildings there now. Do you, is, they're they're basically uh, like uh, what do you call them? Like contain like containers. So okay. They, they're just sitting on. Are they something that you're going to haul away, or do you have to demolish them? No, they would be hauled away. They're not. They're, they're not, not permanent. They're not. They're like temporary yeah, structures. Exactly. And they're currently fed by underground utilities. Yeah, they, they mentioned they mentioned that they were the line that does currently. Feed Is it those fed areas. from that? From the first building, or is it fed from its own service? Is it its own, you know what I'm saying? Is it fed from the utility, um, or is it fed from that building? So there's a generator here. I believe it's, but I, I'm pretty sure it's fed from the existing building. I'll, I'll, I can definitely confirm that. But, uh, um, you know, I guess this is just a site plan review. That, oh, have I, um, it's amendment. Yeah, I mean, for a preliminary, it's fine, but there's a lot more details, obviously, you'll have to, you'll have to work out. OK. Um, it's not is that building going to be fed Rick. so I mean, is that generator so going to be solely for that building or is that no no the generator is Rick, for it's the an, it's an amendment Rick, it's an amendment it's not a preliminary so if we approve the amendment as presented he's off and and running okay so well, the, the the new building will only require electric and 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 there is a service currently in the area that we're proposing to okay. reuse. Okay, I'm, I'm all set. Yeah, I, I do want to just um, quickly state that if, if you're proposing no additional lighting on this other than some wall packs, if you down the road decide <coughs> you'd like a light because you find it a little dark out there, you realize yep. that you're going to be starting this process again, you'll have to come back for another amendment. And uh, I'm just wondering if that's the, really the approach you want to take by going through this process another time for a light and maybe some sort of my agenda. But if um, I guess yeah. I'm a little yeah. confused. Are you proposing <laughs> lights or not? <laughs> no, there are no proposed lights. None? No. Not even wall packs on the building? No. Rachel, would you? Uh... Yeah, I'm just waiting to see if you're going to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at this time. Uh, okay, um, I've got. I assume that this building's going to be on a, a concrete slab. Is that? Oh, I because I, I was looking at the two point font, and I usually have difficulty reading some of that. Um, I have a question on the. <coughs> The flow around the proposed building, and the as I look at um, uh, 
uh, sheet two of four, the site layout and utility plan. Uh, to the right of the proposed building, you've got a 25-foot um, graveled area. Yep. A car is going to, a truck's going to be circling around there? Um, yes, yeah. I mean, it, it's for access around the building. It, it's uh, currently gravel, it's primarily gravel at the moment. We're adding a little extra just to ensure we can get around the building. All right, and in the back of the building, you've only got 15 feet. Yes. Is that going to limit the size of the trucks? Is it going to change the access? Is there going to be an access door in the back? There's no proposed access door in the back. The, 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 the plan we submitted shows um, large warehouse doors in the front with a, with a man door on the side, uh, the side facing the existing building um, with no, no access in the rear. Right, I think that 15 feet's kind of tight. Uh, and the staff noted that the, the size of the uh, landscape buffer was seated and loamed area near the parking is not likely to uh, have a good uh, survival rate. Um, had you thought about creating landscaped areas in other places, as the staff has suggested? Um, well, there's not really a whole lot of other opportunity. The, the entire rear of the property is all a, a storage a storage yard. Um, there, is a sm there is a small you know, landscaped area with, with a tree. Uh, there's also a grassed area to the uh, to the left of the existing building, but uh, yes. as far as other opportunities for landscaping, it, it's uh, pretty limited on, on the site. So th this was the, the the best location, sort of the most visible location for landscaping. Um, also helps delineate the the gravel drive and uh, the property itself. Well, I suggest you consider something more than just loam and seed, but something some really hardy grasses or plants there, um, such as the kind you see in the medians on roadways. They might have more of a chance to, mm -hmm. to make it past one year. I have no more questions. Thank you. Roger. I'm sorry. I didn't go. know if, if it would benefit. I guess it was my comment trying to, to navigate that a little bit, um, just because that strip that looks like about five feet of proposed grass the opposite side, which has the applicant has no control over, it's the abutting property, is also all gravel. So you're essentially trying to get a five foot strip of grass to grow in the middle of open graveled area. <laughs> that, that probably that, has truck movings around and, and such like that. So my suggestion <coughs> was trying to look at expanding the area that they do have a chance, and that's probably below those eight spaces. Like, can you expand mm -hmm. that by like maybe shoving those eight spaces closer into the site, enough to still allow you your, your truck movement through the site, but maybe you can gain that same square footage in an area that you're already gonna grow, you know, expand that, make that larger to kind of balance that. And it was hard for me to articulate, that's why I just kind of wanted to clarify without a plan in front of you when I'm talking about yeah. it. Uh, it was a little difficult for me, but... Um. No, I, I understand <laughs> I understand where you're going, and that's why I suggested that um, there are plants in the middle of um, the yeah. median, yeah. I guess, Parkway that survive on about yeah. three feet. And that could uh, be another uh, option, is trying to lift that up, too. You could even mm -hmm. raise that bed, doing something. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I do suggest that uh, it's a good idea yep. to have the plant, to have... Uh, the planting there, but make sure it's really, really hardy. Hardy, yep. Okay. Roger. Um, I actually um, had the uh, opportunity to go out to the site today. I was out in that area. Mm -hmm. um, it's off of, if you're familiar with uh, where the U.S. Postal Facility is, you're going in that road there. It's the first road on the right. I never even knew it existed before. Mm -hmm. And you have to drive in quite a ways. And it's it's an industrial, industrial, industrial <laughs> development. Mm -hmm. And there's snow on the ground now, but I can't imagine any kind of landscaping in there at all. I mean, maybe there is some, but... There, there's a little bit on the site. But, I mean, it's really a stretch to see. It's all gravel. Um, and I actually drove into the site, and what I... I don't know this, but my, I suspect what you want to... what the, they want to do with this building is to store some of the stuff they have stored just outside. 
I mean, it, it looks like they have all kinds of storage outside. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to be putting inside, <laughs> I mean, but it, yes, they, they have I mean, they've got a lot of stuff there, you know. Exactly, yes. <laughs> and, yeah, um, it's definitely a storage yard. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, I don't think you can do a lot with this. I don't personally think, I mean, it's an, it's just a, it's, an industrial it's, it's a gravel, gravel area. The whole area out there appears to be all gravel. So, I, I mean. Yeah, um, but I tried to. I, I don't think we can make something more out of this thing than what it is. It's just going to be a building to store some of the stuff that's exposed up there. I think. Exactly. Yes. So, um, I th I think it's you know I hate to disagree with you, but <laughs> I, I I can't imagine this strip of uh, grass. It might be the only banana <coughs> ball by a lot more. Um, I just I don't know. I I don't see anything. Well, I think you're agreeing with me, Roger. That's yes, what I was saying. I don't think that grass is going to yeah, grow, I so mean, what is the other it, option? It's, it's just <laughs> not, the whole area is all gravel as far as yeah, I know. Yeah. And um, so I'll leave it at <coughs> that. Yeah, I, um, I don't really have a whole lot else to add. I think, you know, it, this is, in a, as Roger's pointed out, a very industrial uh, area. So uh, that said, I do have a, a draft motion here. Uh, I will read it. <coughs> I move to approve the site plan amendment project titled Proposed Warehouse Building, proposed by Portland Pump Company, as depicted on the plan set, prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions, dated 12-17-18, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings. The applicant is proposing to construct a 2,400-square-foot warehouse <coughs> building with an existing compacted gravel area on the site, an 812-square-foot gravel driveway, and to delineate the parking on the site. The property is located within the Industrial I Zoning District and is identified on the town of Scarborough tax maps is map R55, lot 9. Planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian waste, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, <coughs> and storage. Waivers. One, permit the 20-foot parking aisle with west of the existing building on site. Conditions. One, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, a plan notation stating that the project design meets the performance standards in Section 9A in the zoning ordinance. B, an additional accessible parking space. C, um, there is a deviation, uh, just so you know, uh, from the document you're holding. Mm -hmm. uh, C, the signage proposed to be delineated by the gravel parking areas. D, floor plan and outside access plan. E, the existing utilities on the site and any other utilities that are proposed to be serviced in the new building. F, a revised parking matrix as noted in the staff review memorandum dated 1-14-19. G, the required state plan notation fi found in section 3B8 in the site plan review ordinance. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, prior to the issuance of the first building permit, the applicant shall A, address the stormwater management comments and staff review memorandum dated 1-14-19. B, address the comments in the peer review memorandum, memorandum by Woodward and Curran dated 1-11-19. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. And three, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion. Second. Second, is there any discussion? All in favor? Show that unanimous. Good luck to you. Thank you. We expect to be there for the ribbon hole, okay? <laughs> All right, number 13, BPJ LLC requests a site plan amendment review for 1500 Technology Way. Assessor's map U, 39, lot 4730. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this proposal is located in the Hygis Parkway Zoning District at the Maine Veterinary Medical Center. Uh, at the end of the Technology Way uh, in the Enterprise Business Park subdivision. Uh, the applicant was before the board in October for a sketch plan review. 
The applicant's proposing to construct a 2,808 square foot building expansion along with a new drop-off area and minor improvements to the pedestrian infrastructure. The applicant has requested a waiver for the traffic study because they do not anticipate a significant increase in trip generation at the site. The applicant should discuss this with the board. On the site plan, the applicant has noted that they, had, they plan to vegetate the areas of encroachment within the 15-foot landscape buffer along the easterly property line. However, however, they did not provide a landscape plan. The applicant should provide the board with details about their vegetation plan in this portion of the property. The apl applicant included details about the proposed building-mounted light fixtures but did, but did not provide a lighting plan for review. And the applicant should also coordinate with the fire department in regards to the required walk paths along the perimeter of the building expansion. Staff has provided the board with a draft uh, motion with conditions for your consideration tonight. So we have. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. State your name. Hi, Adam Shane with Stantec. <clears throat> well, we're here seeking an amended site plan approval for an approximately 2,800 square foot building expansion at the main veterinary medical center. Uh, the property is located at 1500 Technology Way, uh, also known as Lot 30 of the Enterprise Business Park uh, development. Uh, the site is accessed via Route 1 uh, through Enterprise Drive to Technology Way, uh, as seen on the area here. Uh, the site has three abutting properties, two of which are undeveloped. Uh, the third being the, the Downs property, uh, which abuts our property on two sides. Uh, today, the site includes the existing 9,700 square foot building, uh, which is a mix of single and multi level building, <coughs> excuse me, totaling a gross floor area of 13,960 square feet. Uh, currently, there are 74 parking spaces on site. Uh, there's an accessory use MRI trailer on site, uh, well, in, excuse me, the northerly side of the building. The site includes many landscape plantings. Uh, small trees and shrubs throughout. Site lighting is provided through pole mounted lights as well as a few building mounted lights. Uh, the proposed project includes the 2800 square foot building expansion as well as uh, a few site improvements uh, as noted. Some of the site improvements include a temporary drop off space at the main entrance to the building. Uh, this is to, to provide some ease of access for uh, client or customers dropping off uh, injured pets uh, in and out of the building. It will be signed as a five minute uh, temporary parking zone as requested by the fire department. Uh, the area to the front of the building is a fire lane, so it will be important to, to maintain access there. The fire department has reviewed and approved uh, this design. Other site improvements include uh, the relocation or the addition of uh, an ADA space uh, which is just off the plan view there. Uh, this is intended to, during winter months, to provide a secondary accessible route to the, to the main entrance. The current accessible route from the ADA spaces to the main entrance sometimes gets blocked with snow, so this will provide a secondary uh, alternate. Um, some other site improvements include the relocation of the transformer pad um, to meet CMP requirements for our setbacks from the building. Uh, there needs to be 10 feet from any windows on the building. Um, additionally, the fire department has requested a permanent egress walkway from any emergency exits, which is provided uh, to the rear or to the side and rear of the building. Uh, we both agreed, us in the fire department agreed that this would be a, a better route um, to avoid any um, issues with the fire lane to the front of the building. <clears throat> um, some other site improvements include revegetating areas <coughs> of encroachment into the landscape buffer. Um, today, the area is forested with a mix of uh, pine and spruce. So if, if needed, we will replant some of these trees um, once construction activities are completed. Um, today, stormwater management for the site is provided through a wet pond at the beginning of Technology Way. Um, can be seen here on this area, uh, in this area here. Um, the intention is to uh, maintain this stormwater treatment method 
It was originally approved as part of a site location develop of development permit for the subdivision. Um, today, with the proposed development, we still remain within the approved uh, threshold for impervious and developed area. So we expect to, to keep utilizing the pond for stormwater management. Um, our office has performed pre preliminary traffic counts for the site. Uh, we feel that there will not be an increase in trip gen generation to the site. Um, it was originally permitted for 17 trip generations for both AM and PM peak times. We feel that uh, with the proposed expansion that we will still remain within that based on our traffic counts. Um, at this point, I'll, I'll turn it back to the board for any, any uh, further questions on um, some of the staff, staff comments that were made. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment on this item. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? Please approach the podium. Seeing none, I will close public comments. Uh, Rachel, do you want to kick this one off? Yeah, I'm looking at uh, A3, uh, which is the interior design, uh, and I've got some questions. Uh, and it actually, they actually address your, your last comment in terms of traffic. You're proposing seven new exam rooms. Um, with a cat ward, additional runs, and an infectious disease quarantine area. How many uh, additional staff are going to be hired? Uh, my understanding is there will be no new staff. You must be really crowded. Yeah, I can, uh, well, this is the owner here, so. <laughs> Dr. Alan Potter, uh, one of the owners of the Maine Veterinary Medical Center. Uh, as far as staff, I mean, the, this, this, is a, this is a growing business, and so we, we do increase staff on a regular basis uh, just as we build departments. It's a, it's a hospital that requires 24 hour, it's open 24 hours a day, so there's staff there all the time, so, we, so, so it dilutes how many people are there at any one time of our total um, number of employees. Uh, but as, as this project develops, we, we, we do want to add a cardiologist and uh, another internal medicine person, uh, possibly dermatologist. So that would be three, uh, and each one of those would be a technician when they're on. Um, the, as far as the, the, the ward itself, I don't think we'll, we'll need additional ward staff. We have a lot that's in the one room now. That, that would be moving back and forth. Having the, the, uh, the cat ward is, is just, it's a, it's a new methodology of uh, reducing stress on pets when they're, in, they're hospitalized. So, so instead of having dogs and cats in the same ward, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a design change. And so we, it, uh, it will allow us to maintain more animals within the ward within the hospital at any one time, and we don't need to move them out, but uh, initially, there won't be an increase in staff needed for that transition. But ultimately, you do anticipate in a fair number more as your business Over grows. Time, yes, I would yeah. think so. I, would hope so. I, th I think it, at some point um, throughout that area, we're gonna have to take another look at the, at the traffic even if nobody, no other staff is added after this goes, after this is built, within a few years, all of these rooms also assume patients coming and people driving in uh, to seek the service. I have one other question around that, and as I look at the uh, infectious disease area, do you anticipate any patient drop-off, or are they patient's going to be coming in the front door and carried through. It depends on how, how far in advance we know it's an infectious disease. Well, I'm just thinking in terms of but the parking in an area for somebody possibly. They, they wouldn't be parking and going around. Any, any admittance to the infectious disease ward would be done by staff who's properly dressed. And, uh, so that, that's not a, not a client area. 
So I'll just. Like we have doors leading out, so we don't have to go through the hospital. So no patients and no uh, owners are going to be driving around and back? No. To meet a staff person? No, we, we meet them in the front. Okay. All right, I think that's actually all the questions I have. Um, you know, I, I like the service that they're providing, and, and I like to see the businesses grow. And I think this is a great business for this area and for that, for that location. Um, you know, as far as the traffic study goes, I'm kind of torn on that a little bit, only because I know that, you know, the traffic... Fees are based on peak hours, and it's not necessarily, you never know when the animal's going to get sick. So, you know, I'm, yeah. as far as waiving the traffic, I, I hate to set a precedence um, where, you know, this is a 2,800 square foot expansion, um, but is it at peak hours? Um, so, you know, that's one of the waivers that's in the draft motion, I guess, and I would. Uh, I'd be okay with it, but um, yeah, that's all I'll say on that. Um, but I do like. I I think it's a great business, and I think it's I, I think it's a benefit to the community. So um, I'm willing to. Um, I think it's I think it's fine. I think it is. Um, I, um, I will support both waivers. Um, I think they've done a good job in, um, you know, uh, addressing the concerns the board has had in the past, and, and I, I'm assuming they're going to um, address the conditions set forth in the proposed draft that we have. So I have no, I have nothing for this. So. Um, so just thank you very much, Roger. I, I would just like to know that you know you have in your submission. Uh, request for waivers for landscaping, photometric traffic impact, auto turn simulation. Um, so it's those are that that is accurate, right? Those are all requests you've made here. Uh, correct. All right. Um, you know, to me the you know the auto turn. You know I you know you weren't driving around the building anyways back there, right? So that's yeah, kind correct. of a you know that's kind of a. Did you have that addressed under the conditions? I Did didn't. I, oh. The reason it isn't in there is because they aren't changing the parking layout. Right. Um, so we so thought it was sort of an implicit. So you don't need to well, specifically so. call that out. All right. If it's uh, relevant. All right. The only one I actually really had um, a little concern with was the landscaping. Um, sure. Which uh, I would typically not find myself saying that very frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Other board members say that. Take his word for it. This yeah. is unusual. This is, this is a new moment in my five-year tenure here. Um, and the only reason I bring it up is because, uh, we, you know, we realize that we are losing some of that um, that landscaping there, and then you are saying you are going to replant, and that's great. I just don't know exactly how that's going to look or what you're going to do it with. Sure. Um, so as part of the conditions, is. Um, did you, have you provided them a copy? Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind just part of the conditions? We do ask for a landscape plan, um, not necessarily that it needs to be represented to the board, but I think it would be important for staff to review it, and if they find it adequate to what it is you're you're doing, you know, great. We won't have to see you again. So, sure. um, over some trees. So, um, excellent. That was probably the only thing that really jumped out at me um, as far as your waiver request, just because of the scope of it. The rest of the um, items you're proposing, you know, I, I'm going to echo Rick on this. I'm glad you guys are growing. I'm glad to see uh, you've got some expansion. You're going to be providing more services to this community. Um, I think those are all those are all great things to hear from our businesses here. So, um, you know, taking the temperature of the room, I think you're pretty much there as long as you fulfill, you know, your work. You got some work left to do with staff, but so of that, I am prepared to um, present the motion tonight for. Uh, site plan amendment. So, uh, I move to approve the site plan amendment project titled Main Veterinary Clinic Medical Clinic Building Addition proposed by BPJ LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Stantec dated 12 17 18 
for the following findings, waivers, and conditions. The applicant findings. The applicant is proposing to construct a 2,808 square foot building addition along with new drop off area and minor improvements to the pedestrian infrastructure. The property is located in the Highest Parkway Zoning District and is identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map U39 lot 4730. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Waivers, one, waive the requirement for a traffic impact study due to the slight increase in trip generation at the site. Conditions, one, prior to the issuance of a building, <coughs> the applicant shall revise the plan set to include, A, detectable warning panels on both ends of the proposed crosswalk, B, a landscape plan that includes details about the vegetation plan within the 15-foot landscape buffer as noted on the plans dated 12, 17, 18. C, the total areas associated with impervious cover, landscape areas, and disturbed areas. D, a plan notation that refers to the 2001 SLDA permit on the site utility grading drainage and erosion control plan, sheet C3.0. E, revise the plan note that refers to the transformer box in the site utility grading drainage and erosion control plan, that's sheet C-3.0. To include language that the new location of the transformer box shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. F. The required walk pass along the perimeter of the proposed building expansion. G. The photometrics plan that includes proposed building mounted light fixtures. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two. Prior to the issuance of the first building permit, the applicant shall A. Provide documentation to ensure that the proposed traffic conditions on the site will conform to, with the original trip generation proposed on this lot for this lot within the Enterprise Business Park subdivision approval. B. Provide approval from the, from the Scarborough Sanitary District. C. Coordinate with the fire department to discuss the required walk pass along the perimeter of the building expansion. D. Address the comments in the peer review memorandum dated 11019 by Woodard and Kern. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. Meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. We have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor. So that's be unanimous. Congratulations. Good luck to you guys. <coughs> Fourteen, a staff report. All right, we do have a few comments. Um, so there have been two new planning board members. Uh, they're for this board to be. Uh, they're going to be posted by the town council on one sixteen. Um, there should be official members by the second meeting in February. So hang in there. Um, and everyone, please come. Yes, yeah. very important to, to come during this, this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the board will need new liaisons to the Long Range Planning Committee and the Transportation Committee. Uh, we can I think it'd be wise to decide this once we have a full board um, in February. And then staff did provide a letter from a resident of Stone Ridge Drive um, in regards to the tabled Piper Shores project um, to the board tonight. I don't know if you have anything else, Angela? Staff report? I have nothing. Okay. Thank you. Administrative amendment report? Uh, none this, this time. Okay. Any correspondence other than the outlined letter from the public on Piper Shores? No correspondence? Planning uh, board comments? Yeah, and I'm not sure whether this is correspondence or a comment. Um, I did receive uh, an email from a member of the Conservation Commission that um, talked about both the commission and then asked me specifically about uh, Dorado Drive uh, and Piper Shores, and I informed her that, that I could not comment on that and that she needed to either call the planning department uh, or to take a look at the workshops uh, that have been held uh, and that are on the local access. Thank you. Any other planning board comments? Yes, Roger. Um, when I was out looking at the um, Portland Pump location today, I noticed across the street on Leslie Road, there's, it's all been, there's actually a road going in there now. It looks like another industrial park going in there. 
Are you familiar with that? Is any of that in, on Skyboro property? Are you aware of it? Looks like Angela's familiar with it. I am familiar with it. That's actually um, in South Portland. However, that area is the Red Brook watershed. So even though it's being built in South Portland, they are contributors of the Red Brook watershed um, fund. So they pay to the town of Scarborough um, based on their impacts and their wetland impacts. Um, so we are watching that closely, actually, but it is in South Portland. And it's basically going to be an industrial park? Yeah, um, the South Portland um, Planning Department provided that information because they were paying to the town of yes. Scarborough. And I believe it was um, for a contractor's yard and possibly, um, I'm trying to think, I, th I think it was some, um, like construction equipment, maybe like um, a dealer kind of, you know what I mean? Like they would have construction equipment out there and things like that, like a warehouse of sorts. It's, it's, it's interesting, the development that's out in that area, mm -hmm. which is kind of hidden, especially mm -hmm. when you go down towards the postal uh, facility and, you know, all, all that stuff in there. Mishmash of everything. <laughs> <laughs> and confusing on what's in Scarborough and what's in yeah, South Portland exactly, because yeah. the road is actually the boundary when you go down yeah. this way. So <laughs> it's interesting. Do I have any other planning board comments? No? Uh, my comment is uh, nice meeting, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you. My only comment would be congratulations, uh, everyone who did it. <laughs> it was a good meeting. Um, I didn't know how we would do on time this evening based on yeah. the size of the agenda, but it went relatively smooth. Um, I look forward to working with all of our, our board members here and two new ones hopefully in a month or so. Nice. so that's yeah. it. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you, guys. Mr. Good Chair? I have yes. like a, oh, I'm sorry, you had the gavel. I have like an unofficial. Like, it doesn't turn. But, um, you have to hold it. Normally, the way that we do...